Mr. Pop. Dark. When the little birds are nasty, and I listen to them too, there's two lonesome people in the whole wide world. That's me and the man in the moon. Hello and welcome to Miskatonic University Radio, a podcast exploring Fantasy Flight Games' Arkham Horror the Card Game. I'm Dane. I'm Dan. I'm Ben. I'm Harrison. And today, we're celebrating! Happy 100th episode, us! Hooray! Yay. <laughs> Dan, you need to put those like little children, <laughs> like that stock sound of children celebrating sound in here right now. <laughs> You know, a, a lot of people thought we'd never get this far. I, I, that's, I don't think that's actually true. I don't think anyone really bothered <laughs> to think that. But if they had, they would be wrong. It was the voices in your head. Wrong as of today. Yay, we did it. Good for All us. All right, great. Good episode. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Follow us at social.mu.fm. All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we technically hit 100, and now we can, now we can call it quits. Is that, is that yeah. true, or do we have an actual episode of things to talk about? No, we're gonna we're gonna quit right now. See you. <laughs> See everybody. Bye. Anyway, this episode we're gonna be taking a cruise down Sanity Lane, remembering all the great times Ben ate piatas, Harrison drew elder signs on take heart tests, mm. and all the times we sat down and recorded, and Dan spent countless hours editing our episodes. Let's talk about our Arkham timeline. Yeah, let's let's do it. So I think we're just going to sort of go through a little a little recap of of everything that's happened sort of uh in the the history and prehistory of the of the podcast and the game. Is that right? I think so. I realized I didn't record anything on this timeline about pre-Arkham Horror the card game times with Arkham, but yeah, it's fine. Whatever. You know, uh, <laughs> I, we got the memories of Arkham. I also don't have every time I had a piada on here. Um, I'd get lost in reminiscing there. <laughs> do so. you ever, do you ever like, <laughs> as you're going to sleep at night, does your memory go back to like a specific piada you ate a couple years ago? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that was a really good one. <laughs> yeah, that does happen occasionally, you know, and you know, look, I look forward to the next time every, every night when next time I'll, I'll taste. I'm excited to do a couple piadas. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, what, what's the first, uh, where, how are we, how are we starting off this, uh, memory journey that we're going to take? Kicking it off. So, uh, I guess the first thing with the, with the, the card game is it was back in May, 2016 when the core set, uh, was leaked, I believe. I don't think it was even announced at that point. I think it had just been leaked. Oh, we were so young. I remember this very well because it definitely set a tradition that would continue for basically all major releases of the game where it would get a, a photo of it. A, a, like a photo of the complete box would get leaked on some like French yeah. game website or something <laughs> yeah, like, like six months really. ahead of time. France. And and I remember like, I remember being excited about it because uh, we were playing a lot of Eldritch Horror at the mm-hmm. time or, or Ben and I were. And also, you know, I was playing Netrunner with, with Dane. So this really felt like the intersection of both of those things. And there was just a sense of like, oh, I bet this is going to be cool when it finally actually comes out. Spoilers. But did was. you guys have any awareness of, of this like before it actually before it released? So I, I don't think I was even aware of the card game until like after it came out. Uh, and you were like, yeah, we're going to talk about it a little later yeah. in the uh, timeline. But but I didn't know about it until you approached me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dan, in a dark about, alley. About, you know, the trench coat. <laughs> I, I opened up my trench coat and I had a bunch you of. You want to get addicted to another card game? <laughs> I had a bunch of cards in oh. there and tokens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was just really excited to see the, like, investigators, like, redone. Because, like, I'd, I'd like, uh, what is it, Cthulhu, Yahtzee, and Eldritch, Eldritch Horror. I loved just seeing them. Oh, yeah, seeing them. Side. <laughs> That's what the, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's what that game's called. Uh, but I liked yeah. seeing, yeah. seeing um, you know, investigators relived. So I was just, like, super excited to, to, to play this. Definitely. Yeah, I think I still have Dan's copy of Elder Sign that he, like, gave me nicely. And now it's just, like, taking up space <laughs> in my house. <laughs> <laughs> that's a strategy because board games take up so much space i'm always i always have like some bad ones that i bought and then realize they were bad or i don't like them and i'm always trying to strategically unload them on people so in this case ben was the victim and i don't regret it <laughs> not that elder sign is terrible it's fine it's just uh, it's know. fun as an app <laughs> <laughs> it's fine it's very lightweight but uh yeah but talk about the the card game which is you know a little bit better than elder sign uh so it, i think it uh the first arkham knights when the card game either had released just before or released just after was 2016. I guess it was, yeah, the car- course that came yeah. out after. It's the next bullet point of my timeline. And I think uh, I think this was not this was not the first Arkham Knights, I think, no. but this was the first one 
with Arkham Horror LCG kind of in the like yeah the the, the course that would be released a month later but it was like available to to play at the at the place at this Arkham Knights and oh, yeah, yeah. Curse of the Rougarou was available and people got it as like a take home gift. Oh, that's cool. I would love to know like how much the player base has changed like if anybody went there before Arkham Knight or before Arkham Horror the card game came out what the difference was like you know in 2015 or whatever as like, compared to 2016 and beyond my understanding is interest in an Arkham Knight skyrocketed with the card game and like it was like <laughs> yeah. a lot lower you know it was still like people that hung out and that enjoyed Eldritch or, or Arkham second edition or whatever and hung out and played but I think the I think it, really it used to be a much more game. like local local Twin Cities kind of thing. I think um, sure, these days sure. these days I think certainly most of the people traveling from out of town are there for the card game. But there definitely are still people that are just there to play um, old school Arkham Poor, which I is mean, pretty cool. There's, there's a good amount of locals that show up too. I know a lot of people going this year or people that live in the area. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that was that was the the first taste that the world experienced, and then the course that came out in November 2016. I think Dan mm-hmm. bought it immediately and then dragged me over to his parents' house to play it. I think is what happened. <laughs> I I definitely yeah, we should we should talk about each of our kind of first experiences <laughs> with the game. I remember getting it as as close to launch day as I possibly could. I think at X9 Games in in Hadley. And I I remember playing it with uh with my friend Merrick who I used to play Netrunner with. Uh, oh, really? I, I remember playing it with Ben at my parents' house pretty sh- shortly after because I used to, I you know, I was going to school at, at, in UMass, but I used to like drive to where Ben lived to hang out or drive to my parents' place. And I also remember playing it with Dane, I think, at the High Horse in Amherst, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there was a bar where like sometimes when it wasn't super crowded, we would hang out and play games. Yeah. You played a card game at a bar? Yeah. We used to, we used to run nets at that <laughs> yeah, we, bar. Yeah, we did. We sure did. We we did a net runner draft at that bar. Was it an exceptionally clean bar? Every bar I've gone oh, to, yeah. I would not want to put any of my sleeved cards even on on the on anything. <laughs> we we brought play mats. So. It was pretty solid. Yeah, okay. But yeah, right. so, so that was so, so. I guess I I have the honor of of the dista- the of introducing both Ben and Dane to the game. I guess Harrison, do you remember when you first played uh, Arkham Horror the Hard Game? Yeah, my I had a friend Tim that uh, really liked to get people to play the board game, the second edition, and I remember we just kind of took the card game and just like tried to read through the rules and it was pretty complex at first and so we took a lot of time to kind of do that but then after a while I got super obsessed with Arkham Horror and just started (laughs) I had like four core sets that just were ready to go with investigators like I had I remember just having like starter decks that I was like just pick someone to do that and I was like at our friendly game store like every Thursday like trying to get people obsessed with Arkham Horror (laughs) and you know, I think that running events like that was kind of how I met Dane too. Because <laughs> you, because I was running events and Dane and Dane was like, "Hey, do you want help running events?" And I was like, "No," because <laughs> I was running events up in Massachusetts, and I was like, "Hey, there's this cool person who's running events down in Connecticut. I might as well meet up with them so that we maybe we could make a whole network of running events." And they were like, "No, okay. that's all right." Okay. Yeah, like, a kind what? of network of running, if you if you want to put it that way. <laughs> So I was about to blame all this on Dan, but I, I realized I don't. Dan is not the source of this because it's. I think it's Dan and I's friend Brad who forced me to play Arkham Horror the board game like twenty, yeah, like 11, fifteen years ago, twenty eleven or twenty like... twenty twelve or something. And he's also the one who introduced me to Biata. So, so <laughs> yeah. shout out to Brad, really. Uh... <laughs> yeah, for real, the progenitor. And I think my. I think like the course set was very fun. I think my initial take was like, these decks are not very fun. Like, you know, the game was new, so you didn't have much to compare it to, but comparing it to like Netrunner decks, the decks were like, you basically just took all of the cards from the core set that you could legally play in like <laughs> Roland or Wendy or whatever, and those were your decks. So yeah. you'd have like, Roland would have like, um, <laughs> like Seeger cards that made no sense. But even, even <laughs> in that early stage, like it was still really fun. And it, and it was like, yeah. you could kind of tell that it would get more fun once more cards were available and once more kind of scenarios and campaigns came out which did yeah i mean i think yeah totally. i think you and i played like roland windy with like the recommended starter decks or whatever and then uh, oh no <laughs> you know, it oh, was no. a fun challenge i think we lost did we lose horribly in the third scenario i feel like we i did. think we got wrecked on standard probably yeah. they had like <laughs> those yeah. decks had like zero consistency right like <laughs> yeah they, they were pretty bad and like they was like all knives <laughs> flashlights <laughs> oh, yeah that's right that's right <laughs> Yeah. I was going to say, I should mention that like the first thing that I realized about the core set was that I needed another core set. <laughs> the second thing that I recognized about the core set was that 
it's actually in secret a two-part campaign with something at the end of it that nobody wants to talk about (laughs) but i remembered feeling fantastic through the first scenario and the second scenario just opened the possibilities and i was like Mm -hmm. this game is going to be great there's also, I think, this famous thing that became a meme of like everyone not knowing where the Lita Chandler card is because it's in the <laughs> oh, core yes. set, but it, it comes it goes with the player cards and not the scenario cards or something, so everybody thinks that they're missing a card. I think at the revised core they moved it to be like packaged separately <laughs> <laughs> to counteract it. Conscious decision. Love it. Yeah. What c- coupled with the core set release, like the core set campaign itself is like the first scenarios are like our first scenario is fine, second scenario is like pretty good, and the third scenario is like mm-hmm. very bad. <laughs> but was coupled with that was the release of the standalone scenarios like carnival of horrors came out december 2016 right after the corset and we yeah. already had rougarou so yeah jumping in you had like five scenarios to play around with and like carnival of horrors pretty good scenario <laughs> so, that's fine oh, yeah it was cool also because it kind of set this expectation that like oh man there's already two standalones i bet we're just going to get these all the time like they'll probably <laughs> do several of these per year at least and then that absolutely did not happen I mean, we, uh, we get we get like <laughs> 1.5 per year maybe yeah kind I think, of i think but... we get one or two every year still uh maybe and they're and they're usually they're usually like epic multiplayer ones that are cool but like maybe not the most fun to play with a single group but like yeah, true, it's, true. it's cool i'm so glad you know yeah it was a good experience to have just those extra scenarios that coming out and i think carnival of horrors was the first one that kind of like really messed with like the map and like yeah, really showed yeah. Like, a lot more potential of like oh there's a bunch of different ways this card game's gonna go yeah, and it was set. Uh, I mean, I, Ruguru was set outside of Arkham, but this was set outside the United States, so that was kind of different. It had really, <laughs> yeah. really cool art, names that were extremely hard for Ben to pronounce. So a lot of a lot oh, yeah. of fun elements that would go on to be uh, major yeah. parts of the game for us. I mean, Carnival of Horrors was like the first time that I saw Dan's face light up in a very mathematical way, <laughs> and he introduced me to a very interesting concept: the Monty Hall problem. Yes, through that scenario and it was one of our favorites at the beginning right like when we were sort of judging how good each of the scenarios was we like carnival was was consistently at the top definitely one of the definitely one of the best ones of uh one of the best ones of the early run of the game i'm just upset at it for teasing us with the mask slot and i don't think that we've used it anywhere else maybe someday yeah mj will pull it back in like the the final campaign that's that's going to be the the warning to you harrison when you see the mask slot used in an actual campaign that's the sign all right (laughs) but the first we did get our first full campaign uh january 2017 i think was when the dunwich legacy i don't remember what the name of the expansion box i don't remember the old name of the the legacy but yeah dunwich legacy expansion box came out and then we got mythos packs i think uh every month roughly after that so that was our first taste of the eight the eight scenario campaign and the release model that we worked with for five four or five years so yeah and i mean dunwich like kind of built on the core so yeah and i don't think it did anything too crazy not compared to like what was coming up next but uh you know, yeah. it kind of kind of cemented it, and it gave us more cards to play with. Oh yeah, a lot of very important cards. There was like a little bit less than half a year that we didn't have charisma or relic hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, or or like any good purple cards. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's that's honestly like the main things that I remember from this era. One is that just Dunwich immediately felt like it made it so you could build actual decks for all of the classes because the core set you were just missing a lot of stuff. Yeah. So so the, like right of seeking and, and everything came out of Dunwich, oh, yeah. right? So so that was a huge deal. The other thing I remember is they it felt like they really kind of underprinted the initial few products of the game because they didn't know how popular it was going to be. The game was actually very popular relative to FFG's normal products when oh, it first came right. out. So like core sets were really hard to come by at first. Um and Dunwich, especially like Dunwich in the first couple mythos packs, because they I think they printed fewer of those than the core set because they you know they expected more people <laughs> by the core set. So I remember like these first couple releases, you really had to like call a dozen game stores around New England and then like figure out one that had it and like quickly drive there and buy it. I remember <laughs> us kind of doing that as a group, like for those first few Dunwich stuff, and it was it was pretty frustrating. Yeah, there there were every month it was uh okay, who could find the pack? Who's who's who has who has the <laughs> yeah, time yeah. on work day to like take an hour off to go go to the store right now? Or, I remember we once we once had Colin rent a zip car and drive to this one specific <laughs> game store somewhere in New what? Hampshire that we, we knew had, had had a copy of it. And that was how we got like oh, the, the Miskatonic Museum or something. I forgot about that. I remember having to drive down to Connecticut when I lived in Nor- like Northampton, Massachusetts. <laughs> I, I would drive down to like the middle of Connecticut and I got introduced to the tabletop shop 
before I ever knew Harrison. And we used to play at Tabletop Shop. And the portal. A decent amount after I met Harrison. So, like, I would have to drive, like, an hour, hour and a half down, <laughs> like, to a different <laughs> state to find all of the Mythos bags. Yeah. Uh, always a struggle, I guess. But I think we're maybe hopefully past that time. I don't know. I went to the <laughs> to get my Scarlet Keys. I went to a store. They had one exact copy. I don't think they had ordered any other one. copies. I, nobody else had <laughs> reserved it, luckily. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll come down at lunch and pick it up. <laughs> so, But uh, yeah, so uh, let's see. Uh, June 2017. Uh, historic. This is kind of Arkham adjacent, but Universal Story Studios' The Mummy 2017 was released, which kicked off the sure-to-be-great Dark Universe series of films. Which of course ended like a week later uh but... I, I i dragged ben to go see it i think the week it came out yep yep <laughs> wasn't very good but you know. dan reported back he was like i saw the mummy and i was like why <laughs> that was the first word that came out of my mouth what we're just we're just not supposed to go see movies now like oh, if a movie i mean might how be could bad. it how could it live up to the mummy 1999 well it's starring Brett and fraser it, it sure did it did not uh, but yeah. <laughs> so... okay. But you know, at least they added the sound into the movie. So look, I really, I really regret that Dark Universe didn't work out. I, I still hold that it could have been cool. Like the, you know, the first few Marvel movies weren't exactly great either. In fact, none of them are great. But like the first <laughs> few were especially not great. So it, it was only have, until Iron Man picked up, right? It, well, that was, that was the, first the first one. one. It, 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 see, the first yeah, one. With, with, but the other ones first were one was decent at least. But yeah, like the the rest of the first few, not so good. So it could have, it could they could have turned it around if they'd actually stuck with it and uh, fired everyone responsible for the money. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> our next point on our timeline is July 2017. Dane and Dan. That was when they first started discuss starting the podcast, and they maybe recorded a single episode. Maybe <laughs> it, 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 accounts differ, uh, but it, it's possible. Yeah, I think was this was this was this the summer that we like hung out in my in my place at, at, in Amherst and just played this game a bunch, and you made me watch JoJo, and we ordered wings <laughs> a bunch. I, I remember just like some fun chill times. That we watched Venture Bros a lot. Yeah, we also watched like the entire run of Venture Brothers again, which was amazing. Yeah. And, like, this is the time where, like, nothing else had been released. So we ran so many times, like, through the core set, through the Dunwich Legacy, constantly. We, like, <laughs> yeah. we just tried different investigative permutations, except for skids. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> we would just keep continuing to go through it again and again and again. And it was so fun that we would still do that. Also, Netrunner was alive. So we still <laughs> played a lot of Netrunner. That's true, too. Well, because this is, yeah, because, like, uh, Dunwich wasn't even finished yet, I think, right? Like, Dunwich was probably, right. or, or maybe it was, like, this was summer 2017 was maybe around the time the last pack was coming out, so. Yeah. And yeah. we were like, we have opinions. <laughs> Dan was like, hey, do you want to, like, voice these opinions? And I was like, Really? It's like, yeah. I was like, See, that's interesting. Damn. I almost remember you being the one that was like trying to get me to do it. I did. I've never, honestly, I never listened to podcasts huh. before we started one. Interesting. Oh, I, I didn't even know what podcasts were. And you were like, I listened to this fantastic podcast called Run Last Click and yeah. like all these other ones that you, you listen to. And I was like, I never really listened to podcasts before. I mean, I don't think either of us was very hard to convince. I think we both thought it would be fun and it was kind of fun. Yeah. So <laughs> it turned out to be all right. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> Yeah, so then uh, Carcosa came out September 2017. Uh, yeah. And this, this was really, like, at least for me, like, really cemented, like, oh, this, this mm -hmm. game's awesome. Yeah. Because that was yep. when they really kind of split off from what they'd done in Dunwich, which was kind of the same, same-ish type of thing in each one, which was like, you know, you gotta get there's an act, there's an agenda, you get some clues, fight some enemies, some spooky stuff happens, you try to stop the world from ending. And Carcosa, yeah. like, flipped that on its head where it really spun in the narrative aspects a lot more into the campaign uh it messed with the rules of how the actual play worked by like having multiple agendas uh or multiple i have to do multiple acts maybe that was around an age but like it messed with a lot of what your expectations yeah. were and like how the game played out it added the hidden cards and stuff so yeah introduced a lot of good new player cards mm -hmm. introduced uh the well i guess maybe rex was the first god tier investigator but mark was certainly the second introduced some oh, good yeah, investigators yeah. i mean one thing that should be mentioned about paths carcosa we, and we definitely should have had a spe separate bullet point for it black stars rise was when ward 2 came out this game. <laughs> we played this game for like a year before we played with ward 2 yeah. which is wild to me i definitely remember this being around the time that our kind of like we started looking at deck building and cards a little bit more critically and developing kind of like takes part mostly yeah. kind of as partially ironically as like a joke but like i remember us all telling each other like oh yeah ward two best card in the game and it kind of still it kind of still is honestly it definitely I think, still is yeah yeah i think everybody like 
everybody I talked to about Arkham like has this benchmark of like a timeline where they like there's Arkham Horror before this card and there's Arkham Horror after this card and I know that a lot of people think of that as Ward but like for me that's like safeguard but <laughs> but just back to Carcosa it's like I know that somebody's a huge fan of Arkham Horror whenever like you just say Haster and like like people cringe <laughs> like like <laughs> oh yeah we're on webcam right now and everybody just kind of like shivered like yeah. <laughs> I just love that like that narratively that's something that people can do with with the game <laughs> it it impacted my brain <laughs> real brain impact what what do you guys think though so i think for a while for a while this was our pick for best campaign and probably like maybe not the consensus pick across everybody but like probably like the plurality kind of choice do we do we still feel that way five years later like how do you how do you think about carcosa at this point I mean, I, I think it's totally good. I haven't played it in a while, just because I've been more. I played it a lot, so it's more like oh, I want to try the newer stuff. But uh, I think it's... Return Two definitely, I think, made it even better. Yeah, the, I think that was. Oh, might yeah. have been the last time I played it was with a Return Two, and it, it's still very good. It is incredible. Harrison and I are playing through with a curse team, and like we just went through the Unspeakable Loath. Everybody was sweating at the table. <laughs> like we barely got out and it was intense. And I think that, that that specific scenario sort of speaks for itself because Dan and I have a very, very specific memory of playing through it for the first time and uh, Min being left, left behind at some point <laughs> and Alex being very upset. But that was, that was funny. That campaign, I mean, in addition to coming out at kind of a pivotal time where like, we sort of saw sparks of the brilliance in this game, you know, yeah. but never really had it like all jammed into one cycle like this. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's kind of where I'm at on it. Like if you ask, like, what's the best movie ever made? People say like Citizen Kane. And it's yeah. not because it's literally better than all the other movies. It's because it was a fairly early movie in like the early 40s when movies were still a pretty new art form. And it was like it was the last movie that was like maybe clearly better than everything before it. And after that, things just kind of like got a lot more interesting and there were all kinds of different movies and you couldn't, you could no longer say like this one is definitively the best. So that's kind of how I feel about Carcosa. Like it was at the time definitively the best of everything up to that point. And then after yeah. that, we kind of just had so much different stuff that it didn't really make sense to say definitively like this campaign is the best anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is like when Dylan became Dylan, when Bowie became Bowie. This is when Arkham <laughs> Horror became Arkham Horror, right? <laughs> like, let's be real. It's when Gallagher first smashed the watermelon, you know, these these timeless <laughs> moments. Yeah. It's also like our first opportunity to like see what XP can do. Like like we yeah. get XP. <laughs> yeah, because Dunwich Dunwich is like, wow. very little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Carcosa doesn't even really have that much compared to like Forgotten Age. Did it when did Delve Too Deep come out? Because <laughs> whenever that came out, that was when we suddenly had 16 more experience. That was early. Camp. I, I think, think that, that was Carcosa. Was in uh, what about the Obol? When did the Obol come out? Obol was later. Obol was Forgotten Age, I think. Okay. Mysticonic Museum. Yeah. So, okay. So we, okay. Oh, yeah. We were yeah. just delving yeah. all the time. <laughs> you had <Yeah>. to. <laughs> but, yep. Uh, yeah. So Carcosa, definitely a, a big change there. Another big event for us, for uh, Dan and I, we went to arkham knights 2017 which was our first arkham knights in october of that with year with our friend colin with our friend colin dean didn't, dean didn't go to that i thought he did i guess no. not uh but yeah uh so that was a fun experience because that was our first um what would become almost annual trek uh to minnesota lab of Lucy what premiered there that was the first taste of like the the multiplayer or massive mm. multiplayer scenario type I got to go on the card council and help design a card. Uh, we don't need to mention mm. the name of, but I, I was there <laughs> and participated. And then we also saw the the horror of the first uh, novella, uh, which is a whole a whole new challenge of trying to find those novellas every time they released. Oh. <laughs> um, I read yeah, those. The first one that we just bought there at Arkham Knights. The Jenny one was at Arkham Knights. Yeah, later. yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was our first trip to the uh, to the to, before it was the Game Center when it was just the Games Center. But it was it was good. It was fun. Yeah, it was good times. Uh, and shortly after that, I think the first invocation event happened. Oh, in what was that December 2017, which was yeah. I think mm -hmm. Labyrinth literally featured it. I don't think they gave it out during that, but we went to like X9. Yep, to run that event. Right? Was Dane there for that? Yep, yep, yep. I was there. Yeah, yeah. 
I led one of the groups. I think we, we, I think we all one did of the that. Groups. Yeah. And, and that was, uh, I remember what was, it was just cool that there was actual prize support for it. Like FFG had done this for Netrunner and the oh, other right. games where they would have like game, uh, you know, game night kits or whatever, mm-hmm. or like, uh, pro, you know, store tournament promos where you could get play mats and boxes and things. So yeah. it was just neat to see that it, it didn't really last. Like they did a few of these, I think they did three, I want to say, yeah. and then they stopped, mm-hmm. but it was cool to at least see a little bit of that. I mean, it's hard, yeah. right? Cause it's yeah. like a cooperative game. Yeah. I still like the idea of them kind of like trying to get people to game stores to play in like a community setting. I wish they would do more of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's a lot of it that happened a few years later, or there's, there's a thing that happened in a few years later, which, you know, separated everybody forever, but like what are you talking about <laughs> second on my beard, <laughs> the, the invocations, I always like remembered them by the promo card that was with them and the play mat that was with them i i just completely forgot yeah, about yeah. all of the scenarios oh, yeah that were this, released this gave out the daisy saying. promos right like the first yep. of like the, the, the daisy, promos, of, like, five and daisy they, promos that exist and the <laughs> i dox i dox salon's pet yeah yeah yep. yep. you know what i think I dox your IP was this the first time at dean in person during that invocation i feel like I it was so. oh it might be it might be yeah. i think i uh sold him a bunch of sleeves that were matte that i had by accident that's like, right look because i <laughs> yes. accidentally bought mats instead of or i got mats from an order instead of clears and i was like i need to get rid of these and we did like a, a deal in the parking lot and then parted ways <laughs> i think that's probably true and i think also like i think over the next year or so i think ben would sometimes come and hang mm. out in that area and we would we like i remember we played through we played through carcosa or something like as a group in my basement but that was for gun age Okay, forgot. I feel like the first time at Harrison was also at Invocation. Yeah. It was like the year later, maybe. Oh, you came yeah. to one of the ones we did at the portal, and then it was always great to like have a game store that that yeah. like expected to like somebody to run a invocation for them. So like it was always a great opportunity to meet people, and it's think... kind of how we met Dane too. Definitely. Yeah, it was whatever Invocation gave out the lucky cards. I think. I guess. Oh, sorry, I also yeah. remember which uh, which promo it was. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just it's all about the promos and the playmats. I don't, yeah. Anyway, was that Egypt? I don't remember. Yeah. So the next next big event, or in the year of 2018, in May, the Forgotten Age uh, was released, or the first the first uh, expansion for it, and then the rest of it would come out throughout the year. Uh, this was pretty divisive among us, and I think maybe still divisive oh, among man. the community. This was like, remember, I mean, it should have been included. April 1st, 2018, they spoiled the survivor <laughs> for the Forgotten Age. Oh, yeah. I remember that. April 1st, Mr. they Calvin. spoiled yeah. the first investigator <laughs> that had all zeros across all of their stats for the Forgotten Age. We, we joked about that with MJ in the last episode. Yeah, Dan, Colin, and I, I think, were, like, up in his uh, his parents' cabin in Maine or something. playing. We were, like, driving up to Maine, yeah. Doing some Arkham Marathon, and that was happened. I don't know if it was actually April 1st. It might have been March, like, 31st or whatever. Something like and that, yeah. it was like, was this, is this an April 1st article? Is this, is this a joke? <laughs> I feel like my position on Forgotten Age has stayed pretty consistent and reliable and steady, and I feel like you guys have gone all over the place with it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's definitely cool things about it. I'm just, I'm not super excited to play it again. I feel like you guys both like it now, or all three of you guys, maybe. I like it. Yeah, I appreciate it now. I, I, I was kind of like, it was my lower tier initially, and I think as the card pools expanded, I played it more. I like it more. I don't I don't think I ever, like, hard hated it. Maybe maybe that's on record. That Maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm on record of hard hating it. I don't know. <laughs> um I, I hard hated it. I think I remember <laughs> I remember liking that it kind of made evasion a thing. Like before evasion would oh, be like right. something yeah. that you didn't like think about. Like it wasn't a very helpful thing to do. Yeah. Like when I got in Carcosa when I got the the organist, I just remember I was like, okay, I'm just gonna lose this one because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, and previously like Dunwich there was like one scenario where you like kinda need to evade and then same thing in Carcosa, I think. And at least in multiplayer. Yep. And then the uh, Front Age brought in a new mechanic that kind of encouraged it more. So that was, that was cool. I mean, Front Age it had the supplies mechanic. It, had, it introduced a bunch of new mechanics, but I think they didn't all land. While, like, all the new mechanics in Carcosa did land. Come on, you guys. Yeah. You got to turn into an alien. <laughs> some of the some of the scenarios were really good. Like, Threads of Fate was great. Yeah. Depths of Yoth oh, was yeah. great. I remember Depths of Yoth being great. I think Cities of Yoth, or, uh, it, or what is it? Yeah, Archives. City of the Archives is fun. I think Dan has said he doesn't like it because he doesn't, like, get to play his deck it's like a weird Assets. amalgamation yeah i'm not the only i'm not the only one who thinks that like, no not that's at all it. that's a lot of a, people think yeah that, totally. i mean i i respect it it's a very cool and creative scenario i just like it always annoys me to play it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. i remember you guys i think you guys hate it because didn't you guys die horribly in like the second scenario or something when you guys first played it <laughs> with with carolyn yeah, carolyn's book came out Carolyn. at some point a little bit after that was oh. Carolyn. yeah 
I also like, I mean, not to drag on it too much, but Untamed Wilds is still maybe my least favorite scenario. It's just, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just a really, it's a really brutal opening to a campaign. It is. And I think to be fair, I mean, looking at this timeline now, Pasta Carcosa and then Forgotten Age. Like what campaign would, would hold up yeah, after pretty much you anything, just got off of riding the Carcosa train? Almost anything you was know? maybe going to feel like a letdown, you know? Yeah. So I think that that might have tilted my attitude a little bit towards it being negative. Me but too. Now probably, after yeah. replaying it, I was like, oh man, this is much better than I thought, than I remembered. That's also cool. re- Return to is better. Yeah. So I mean that, uh, it was maybe the first part of a double whammy that, that brought you guys <laughs> into starting the podcast because June 2018... <laughs> was when netrunner was unceremoniously oh yeah deleted um the infamous jacking out announcement black yeah. friday i actually don't remember if it was a friday but whatever day of the week it was it was black <laughs> that day of the week oh man yeah after that tragic event uh july 2018 you guys uh dan and dan started recording and, and released episode two of the podcast yeah, and I it's it's funny. As it should be. I never really thought of this as like we started doing this because they canceled Netrunner, and I'm still I still don't think that's necessarily the case. But when you look at it on the timeline like this, it's like oh maybe that kind of was part of it. Yeah, but yeah, we just started. Uh, I think we. It's also like I felt like there was enough going on with the game. Like there was lots of new stuff coming out. There were a lot of new cards. Like deck building had gotten really interesting, where it maybe hadn't been for the first six months. Like it felt like there was a lot of stuff to do a podcast about. And at the time um there really weren't i don't think there were any other podcasts going at the time or maybe maybe a couple had like just gotten started i think mythos busters and drown of the flame yeah yeah i think those i think those were like the ones who started at the beginning yeah Yeah. they were both they both started from the beginning or like shortly afterward yeah i think i think you're right but it was it was definitely like the kind of ecosystem of podcasts and channels and stuff that exists now there was nothing nothing close to that back in summer 2018 yeah it has been grown huge. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We started. Did we start doing it every two weeks or once a month? I can't, I, I feel like we we went we went to once every two weeks relatively quickly, but we might have done it slower. Yeah, at the I first. think it was once a month, and then we did it every two weeks. I, I have vague memories at that time of sort of like gradually figuring out how to edit podcasts, and it's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I got distracted. Yeah. It looks like you guys switched to two, doing it once every two weeks, uh, fairly quickly. It was like mm. the first, but there was a bigger gap between the first couple episodes. And then in September 2018, Dan made his exit from New England. Hey, want to start a podcast? Bye! Forever yeah. fragmenting the group <laughs> across the United States. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the days where we could all just like drive for an hour or so and be in the same place and uh, play cards was sort of coming to an end. We, we managed to play a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be home for a holiday or something like that. We, we still made it happen every now and then. Um, and of course, there's also electro electro digital card game operation mechanisms that we've taken advantage of. I don't think that existed at the time. That, I don't I don't have that on this timeline, no. but that, that did come around pretty, pretty soon after that. Yeah. Although, I mean, after Dan moved, we did then go to Arkham, Arkham Knights the following month in October 2018. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, yeah, exactly. Which Dane, we did, did hey. come to that one, right, Dane? Yeah, that was Dane, Dane's first trip to Arkham Knights. Yeah, and that was also the yep. same month that you guys, uh, I would say, tricked me into joining the podcast. <laughs> Due to by using <laughs> vague words, uh, it, it, well, we we had had you on as a guest, I think, to talk about cards in some pack. Well, Dane kept saying he wanted me to come on the cast, and I was like, "Oh, okay, you want me to come on the podcast?" But what he actually meant was be a member of the cast on the podcast. And then I like <laughs> done a couple episodes, it's like yeah, this is fine, I guess I'll do it. But <laughs> I did, I guess I didn't know what I was committing to at the time until I was already yep. in. So yeah, <laughs> it was it was kind of funny how that happened. Uh, but I think it was things, things just went a lot better with like three people. Mm-hmm. Like it's just easier to, it's easier to keep things moving. I and think you definitely needed someone to ask rules questions to, which at the time yeah, we, was much easier in 2018 to answer <laughs> questions about. <laughs> yeah. We definitely needed someone who actually understood the rules. That was a really big enhancement to the podcast for sure. Oh man. I can't even remember those beginning games before we met Ben, where we were like, Hey Dan, what happens if this happens? 
I think that's this. I mean, I, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I refuse to actually read the rules, but I feel like I have a good intuitive understanding of about like seventy percent of them. You know, <laughs> the other the other thirty percent, that's what we need Ben for. I feel like yeah. I feel like Ben Ben definitely like like has a huge role, especially on the Discord, mostly to like read the rest of a card for me because I just like <laughs> get like three words into a card and I'm like, oh, okay, this is how this works, and then Ben's like, that's absolutely not how see, that works. See Ben in in let's say other card games, uh, you know, there's a whole official judge program for people who are rules experts and they're they're revered as gods and respected by everyone are they and they get unique <laughs> they well kind of and they get they get unique promo cards and everything <laughs> and uh but in, in arkham unfortunately this is all kind of unofficial yeah, that's, so that's an offer in arkham so i mean if that becomes a job i can you know career pivot quick to that you know uh, yeah <laughs> Well, and we should say there at, at the time, again, this was still kind of early days, but these days there's like a specific discord channel for people to kind of like debate the rules. And there's people, there's kind of like liaisons between the FFG mm-hmm. dev mm-hmm. team and like the community to figure out rules stuff. So there's a lot of infrastructure in place now that there wasn't back then. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, a lot of the time, if I have a rules question, I'm not sure if I'll go there and ask them and someone will, <laughs> someone will tell me right away. So, right. and I think FFG, at least recently, FFG has gotten a lot better at like responding to like the weird interactions questions. They kind of struggled with that for a while because I think it was like all on MJ to do, and she was also <laughs> trying to like design the whole card game. So, so uh, it was a bit of a burden. But now I think they have a dedicated rules person that will respond to questions. And now they're like the FAQ on Arkham DB gets updated like every week or two with like new stuff. So when when was the first? I don't know if we have it on here, but when was the first taboo? Because I remember like <laughs> crying about Machete. It's on here. It's it's coming oh, up. That? Spoilers okay. for like spoilers. Three more points. Sorry. <laughs> uh, here's a question though. Didn't I feel like every time we went to Arkham Knights, somebody got to be on the card council? Is that right? Uh, no, no. Ben Ben did in 2017. You did it at another Arkham Knights. I still haven't gotten to do it. 2018. I think Colin won like some prize. And like, and oh, that's got, right. Like, he won the unexpected courage and like somebody else, and it was some complex thing. There's that... some kind of horse trading I, that's happened. I, I remember what it was. <laughs> so I I won the raffle that had all of the books in it, all of the books investigators, mm. and and Colin won the raffle that had the two unexpected courage alt arts. <laughs> oh yeah. And Colin was like, "I want those," and I was like, "I want the unexpected courages," and then we traded. I didn't something like didn't that. Didn't Colin yeah. somehow end up with, like the the investigators Arkham book? I remember that I won an Investigators of Arkham book and oh, I traded right. it. I traded it to somebody for something, and I think <laughs> yeah. I think Colin ended up with it. And I think I I don't know I got an extra promo or something. I don't, I don't even remember. Yeah. If this sounds weird, it's because Dan and I come from Netrunner and Magic, where like trading things and like having currency related to things is much more normalized. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, it's you know, if only this game had kind of like an anti rule, where like when you start playing with other people, you have to put one of your cards in the center, and then at the end, <laughs> then at the end, oh, if no. you lose the scenario, you have to light them all the anti cards on fire. That's maybe that's a fun <laughs> variant that we could talk about for. Our oh no, that game. would be a good reason to put bad cards in your deck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just do that with the O-Ball. Just like. Like if you die, then you also have oh, to like burn up your. You have, you have to burn your whole deck. That would be no. That should be that should be a super O ball that gives you like twice as much XP or something. That would, that would be great actually, um, and it would it would it would be good for FFG's revenue because there'd be a lot of people buying new cards, um, more cards. The other thing in Arkham Knights that year was Guardians of the Abyss mm-hmm. Part Two, right? Like Part One yes. had been at Gen Con the same year, um, so those are pretty cool scenarios. I think we definitely had fun playing those. Usually with Arkham Knights, we like incorporate whatever the scenario is into our campaign, but I think that year we just like played it twice, uh, <laughs> both both halves. Probably, yeah. Because uh, we had probably already oh, played yeah. the first half at, uh, beforehand. Also, those are very long scenarios. Yeah, yeah. The, the first one is, the second one's not as bad, but the first one's like three scenarios. In yeah, the first one, Dan, uh, Alex, and I played, and I think Ben, were you were there too, and it took us like five and a half hours to play through it. <laughs> Oof on uh spooky mythical didn't we we did like online. all rogues or something <laughs> and it and took it, it took us so like four, five hours or something ridiculous uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh i don't know i mean that, that that's, that's fun the egypt scenarios are fun wasn't the performance of how arkham knights did affect like how like blob was designed or something i forget the results of what we did at arkham knights determined like what weakness would get added to the game like three years later or something okay like there were three weaknesses. I, I don't know if those other two weaknesses just also ended up being put into the game, <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure like the curse, like we just knew the names of the weaknesses. So what I think happened is they picked three cool sounding names of weaknesses <laughs> and then 
that's what they picked to add to the the deck uh might have been the cursed one or something that's came out of insmith oh like the one that adds curses. like but yep that's it so cursed. it's all your fault oh yes <laughs> day of reckoning i think that was that so uh but yeah i mean that's, that's it's always so fun to have those little interactions i don't have it on our timeline but like at some point they started doing like the group card councils uh maybe that was in the quarantine times but yep yeah i think so because the cards that were designed in in the first Arcanites eventually made it into the game, I think in Circle Undone, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's so. usually like one and a half cycles after or something we see them. But uh, in November 2018, I guess the historic event for us is we upgraded our, our theme song uh, mm, with hey. the Me and the Man in the Moon by the Ambassadors Orchestra, uh, 1928, which is technically like two years before the copyright was available. Uh, <laughs> it's available next year and YouTube will stop copyright striking me. So I'm excited Hooray. for that. <laughs> um, unless Disney like gets it extended because of... <laughs> and dane uh but... dane dane kind of like scrambled up the beginning of it to mm. put in some creepy radio sound effects so that's where the that's where the opening came from yeah yeah i think it was yeah. episode eight or nine or something was when we switched to that and we've we've been it was shortly after i joined because i didn't remember there was a different theme song i was like what <laughs> <laughs> the original one we used was one that i also made by myself mm. it was just like a quick little lick it was very good it was just it was ominous it made it seem like the podcast it made it seem like someone was going to die on the podcast oh my God. yeah and it made a lot of sense it was like yeah. we're not going into a funeral home dane yeah we're let, gonna, we're... let's pick something a little more a little more uppy and i was like fine the mood of the podcast is is less like listen and we will tell you a tale of then it's more like hey let's argue about some cards you know? <laughs> i know so. there was also a point i don't know if it was near this point where you were like dane you need to start saying the intro a little bit more like peppy you can't just be like hello and welcome to miskatonic university radio and i was like yeah you're probably right <laughs> yeah you need to you need to welcome welcome people to the podcast yeah lots of lots of learning and growing and figuring out figuring out how to do stuff and then we got to the novel year of 2019 uh where we saw the circle and done released in january this is a campaign that i think is divisive uh maybe more than the forgotten age at least in in sub sub communities interesting yeah. uh, but we liked it a lot at least, at least yeah i, I feel like we, we we've always just liked it i think right i yeah i liked it from the beginning totally yeah what about you harrison i know some people that i mean i like it a lot just thematically which is cool i know that some people got really like bummed out like because it took you months to play that play it and then if you were just going all in on the spooky cult then you win <laughs> and then you just like have to do it again um before i don't know i think that's what made a lot of people upset it was the first campaign that had like an early win condition as opposed to an early lose condition that's all a matter of like opinion though right like it's all you know because the, the, the game doesn't really tell you like you win or you lose right it's just like you're you're done oh, you're it done. says you win question mark or something like that. <laughs> okay, but, yeah, okay, okay but i don't know the circle undone i think it has a lot of will tests which people don't like and investigating is harder so if you're not a class that's like really good at investigating, you're more likely to fail more often. It, it can be more punishing, I think. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why folks don't like it as much. But I, I enjoy the theme, and I think the I guess the last scenario has some issues uh, scaling wise um, and, and randomness wise. Like you can just get kind of boned in the last scenario if you get unlucky. Oh yeah. Um, People keep saying that. I I feel like literally every time I've played it, I've just gotten lucky, which statistically shouldn't really be possible. <laughs> just be lucky. Yeah, I mean, yeah just be just be lucky. Come on. Yeah. How hard is it? It's, a, it's yeah. the survivor way. You know, it's Dan's usual mentality. Yeah. Heart heart of the cards. I think the one thing that was difficult for us as regard in regard to the circle and done was that like this was the first cycle where the investigators, we were just like, I don't know what's going on with these investigators yeah. because it was Carolyn, Joe, Rita, Preston, Preston Diana, and Marie. And Marie. I think, we're all, all in it together. So everyone's a little weird. And we were like, how do we play this game? Like, what are these investigators? Our blind playthrough was just wild. I did not have a fun time because I think some of the investigators did not have a good card pool enough to like support like a a fun and active play style but yeah this was also the first time that we saw the like rogue big money which i was really excited about ben always insists that when we do the first run through a new campaign that we have to play the new investigators uh, which <laughs> yes sometimes is fine and sometimes feels like if a... i didn't impose that rule dan would just play daisy or <laughs> or something or mark every time so not every time but i'm yeah, trying to be more often. you know how you'd like force me to try new foods or new things dan 
Yeah. It's the same thing here in Arkham. I'm trying to get you to experience other investigators. Expand his Arkham yeah. palette. Yeah, but one of those things like actually is good for you, and one of those things is just like, right. hooray. It's important I'm to playing, experience uh, other investigators. Hooray, right. I'm playing Carolyn. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I thought you liked Carolyn. I mean, she's fine. Whatever. Because you like to like spend like 12 turns playing all of her assets and then finally investigate. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the first t- this is the first time we got our book investigators actually officially oh, yeah. released, right? Because yeah. we, well, yeah, we, we got Marie. Marie and we got Marie, who's like okay where's my occult cards though and then we have carolyn which uh you know she's just like she has a weakness that you could deal with <laughs> instead of just like <laughs> yeah. immediately lose yeah that book carolyn was is yeah was so rough never again and marie we marie was originally released with uh as like uh, a promo investigators to the investigators of arkham book uh right yeah sorry. which which With came out like shortly format. before the game came out yeah I think. Or, or maybe just after but at the time like we didn't pre-order that because we weren't that into the game so we didn't have marie for a while at least i didn't i think midway through the circle undone cycle in april of 2019 we got the first taboo list Ooh. Mm. which we are always excited about the taboo list because it uh is a is a rule set that i can apply mostly to dan <laughs> to uh curb the power of the cards that he plays a little bit so and, and so it's an interesting discussion i think that first taboo list we saw like rex was finally like actually nerfed although i think we had stopped playing rex at that point because he was it was too easy yeah pretty and much then, like machete was nerfed and, and then a couple other things but, yeah. milan right was milan oh yeah, no, yeah milan, milan, milan rex is, has that uh so he works once per turn so higher education streetwise yeah uh the 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 ridiculously broken scrapper was finally put up to five xp oh yeah ending <laughs> ending the reign of terror of the card scrapper that was really just wrecking the metagame entirely I mean, it's still it's still like a four i, I don't know I, I i never have money in survivor to to do stuff maybe it's to my play style but yeah so that was the first type of lewis which is, is an interesting way to manage the growing card pool where it's kind of like a oh this is kind of an optional thing you can do to like uh restrict yourself a little bit so so maybe you're not playing the the ridiculous overpowered cards and they did it so like some things they just made cost more experience but other stuff they like changed the behavior and then they had a whole category that was like oh these are cards that we banned but the first taboo is to not ban any cards so it's just like <laughs> you know it's coming um and did eventually did they not ban uh double or nothing at that point no no not immediately they i think it was maybe the next one okay uh or, or the okay, third, okay. third taboo list it's been like five or six by now was this taboo list the one that confronted like the second the this was like right after the circle undone came mm-hmm. out so like that infinite rita thing was a thing there was a jenny thing uh, i don't know yeah with with all in did all in get nerfed in that one i didn't note it down what got noted when i think so yeah yeah it was all in the one that gives you a bunch of clicks and uh teddy bears it does seem like taboo list like, sometimes is just like nerfing specific infinite combo decks that i don't know if anybody actually yeah. plays more than once cuz like, it can't possibly be fun to <laughs> To just, they, yeah. they do <laughs> and and i think this was like this was around the time that you started to be able to do some really weird combo stuff with decks that you couldn't do before like we did an episode about some of these things like you could do like um what's the survivor card that makes you just pass all tests for a turn or something like that there were there, oh, will to survive. yeah, yeah. There, were, there were just a lot of combos that were trying to like play that and then take infinite actions basically and for the first time you could like kind of sort of do it yeah, so I mean that was that was a cool way to deal with with card balancing, and we keep seeing iterations of that. It's usually like once a year now. There was one recently for those that are following news. We haven't talked about it yet on the podcast, but the machete finally got taken off. So machete Yay, was there for the return of machete three, three and a half years. Oh man, I dusted off my copies. <laughs> yeah, I mean I like that. Like when Mandy was released, they just kind of like tweaked other things, and it was like clearly like just just, <laughs> yeah. just get Mandy, please. <laughs> The new one was like taboo friendship ended with machete. Uh, Cyclopean hammer is my new taboo friend now. You know, like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah, they nerfed Mandy and they actually buffed Lola the recent one, which I don't know. Maybe we'll talk. I about heard she's good. Future, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to play her yet, but now I'm more interested because they took away her extremely crippling uh, weakness. You know, so July 2019, I think with our 25th episode. We interviewed MJ for the first time, which for us was very exciting to to get to talk with oh, wow. game creator. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Past, present, and future. And we've done uh we've kind of done an MJ interview like roughly once a year since then. So that's always it's always fun to check in and uh it's always a really good time. Yeah, we talked to yeah. MJ or or Jeremy. I think we did Jeremy by himself one year, I think. But yeah. Big uh yeah. big big thanks to MJ and the whole rest of the mm-hmm. FFG crew who've been on the podcast just for talking to us because that's really fun yeah 
this is the first time I've seen this timeline again. So like, this is the first time I'm realizing that it was basically a year after we started the podcast, mm. which is kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we mostly did like an episode every two weeks, so but sometimes we had breaks or whatever. So like, you know, every 20, 25 episodes a year. So that's why we're at a hundred now after like four years or so. So yay. So September, 2019, uh, we saw the dream eaters released which was the first time we kind of got a new playing with the campaign format, I guess, mm-hmm. where like we, the last mm-hmm. four campaigns had all been basically eight scenarios uh, that you play linearly. There was a little bit of mix-ups, like Dunwich, you could like do the first two in different order. Front Age has like a secret extra scenario and, and also has a couple scenarios that are like half scenarios in one scenario or whatever. But, but Dream Eater is just like, oh, this is actually two campaigns that you play simultaneously. It was a neat concept. Uh, now I think it's whatever I want. Like, oh, do I want to play Dream Eaters? Do I want to manage two decks at once? <laughs> is is that it, it, there? Uh, it is. But... It is kind of a barrier to entry of just having to make two decks and sleeve up two decks is mm-hmm. is kind of what stops you a lot. I think also like we we like the, I think we all like mm-hmm. the Dream Eaters, but we all seem to like the Dream side of it a lot more than the Spider side. So that kind of complicates the experience of going back to it because we kind of feel like, uh, you know, uh, but what if we just play the dream side? I will say, though, <laughs> we're kind of expecting that they might maybe do a return to this at some point because this is like the most recent campaign that they haven't done a return to. I would love to see a return to the Dream Eaters. Hoping so badly. I think what MJ said on whenever, whenever they announced they weren't actually actively working on it was like, we're not working on it right now, but maybe in the future. Yeah, MJ, yeah. uh, so, as as I think she's admitted herself, is not the person that likes to say no to something. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, it'd be yeah. cool to see Return to Dream Eaters. You know, maybe we get more tarot cards or whatever. I don't know tarot cards were in a circle. No, done. what was the yeah. circle done? This is yeah. bonded, bonded cards. Um, uh, myriad. myriad. Yeah. Mm. Bonded cards are fun. I like Swarm. Like yeah. all of the mechanics mm. in Dream Eaters were just a hit, right? Obviously, for Ben, Swarm was a hit because Zoe got a huge. The buff. player cards in Dream Eaters so, were great. Like you know, there's everybody. I think a lot of people just enjoyed the Dream Eaters. Yeah, yeah. at so, least two like all timer scenarios in Search for Kadaf and uh, Where the mm-hmm. Gods Dwell. Have any of you uh, gotten to two groups to do the four part scenarios, just like back and forth, and just checked it on each other? We got that to work like once. I have not managed to do that, but... Oh, wait, no, is that true? No, I haven't managed to do that. <laughs> I, I think I tried to convince my friends to do it at some point, but couldn't couldn't get them on board. Cause they all it's just, to do it's just really funny to be like, uh, yeah, we decided not to help you, and we're going to keep the cat, so... Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no, we, we yeah. did do that. We did it at MUR Plays. Of, oh, that's right. Of Dream Eaters. We did. Us, us four, four people talking <laughs> at the podcast right now did this. Where Dan and I did Dreamside, and you, Harrison and Dane, did the did the Spider Side, Oops. right? Dan, you can edit this out if you want. <laughs> and that that did happen. Where sometimes we're like, yeah, we don't, we didn't give you the cat or whatever. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this was this was the first cycle that introduced a scenario where we constantly every every single person who's who's ever played this game has forgotten one of the mechanics in <laughs> every single time they've played it, which is the infestation bag in the in uh, Spider Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a long tradition of <laughs> adding one extra thing to the normal step cycle that you just forget every time. Yes. At least the squid the squid does a good thing in this scenario. Or this campaign. True. <laughs> yeah. True. And that was different too. But yeah, after Dream Eaters uh released at least the box, we had October twenty nineteen, Arkham Knights twenty nineteen, which is again uh me, uh Dane, Dan and Colin. We got to do the Keeper's Nightmare uh there mm. where we faced Jeremy and were destroyed uh painfully <laughs> over the course of three hours even though yeah, we, we survived we wrecked. survived for a while i you know. i feel like jeremy was just kind of like had defeated us after like 20 minutes and then just was like yeah i don't want to immediately end this game so we'll just we'll draw it out a little bit <laughs> let them see more of the scenario but uh maybe uh i don't know it, it was fun I, I think i played patrice or something and that was the first time i played her it, like we didn't know we were gonna do this keeper's nightmare so we were just were like oh you want to come do this thing we're like uh, i guess we'll grab our decks and, and go in yeah I, I i tried an interesting strategy for that which was i brought a really good deck but uh, you, you guys you guys went in Boy. a different direction with it so that was cool <laughs> yeah i i held two decks one good deck and one min deck that yeah. wasn't that great and i was like i'm gonna go with the min deck and then Jeremy immediately punished me. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, uh, Colin was playing uh, Larry Anderson, I think, which was, you know, it was fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With, with agency backup. That got immediately yeah. crypt chilled. Yep. Oof. <laughs> that was a fun experience. And then, Dane, you got to do the card council, and you designed, designed a card, which maybe you are proud to admit the name of. <laughs> do you remember the name of the Pur- card? Purifying Corruption, maybe? 
a card bot can yes yeah yeah there we go yeah, purified yeah. corruption uh, do we have guard card bot in the studio today no sad, sadly sadly card bot uh resigned from mur and took a job at, at meta to work in the metaverse so uh, <laughs> oh no we, we, yeah but we're, we're i mean i'm proud of card bot and i'm glad that it's moved on to, to bigger and better things fair fair <laughs> the other things that arkham knights is the blob premiered blob did everything which is Pretty a cool. was a very fun event uh that was the first yes. i think real multiplayer right we had lab of before but this was like a whole new level um, and never we never looked back at that was fun to see after after blob it's a real massively multiplayer oh, yeah. offline card playing game <laughs> I, really good. Yeah, I remember yep. playing this one at gen con when it was released like or one of the first ones and we played like a 90 mm-hmm. like a 90 player blob and everybody was just so excited when we defeated it and i remember mj was there and just like we <laughs> it, 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 it was like the first time that we saw so many people that were playing arkham together and just to, uh, celebrating together I, and i definitely like learned from a lot of the things from labyrinth so yeah it was the first time where we had like a big collaborative event where everyone was contributing to the same thing like they sort of tried to do that with the gardens of the abyss the previous year where it's like oh your results affect something but yeah, it was a little yeah. disconnected but this was like you're constantly being updated and like watching the health boss the boss's health go down or whatever boss's health <laughs> and uh yeah that was really cool I guess, yeah, I guess it did premiere at Gen Con. It wasn't Arkham Knights. Um, it's just, that was what we played it the first time. Uh, yeah. Or Dan, Dan, Dan and I, that is. So, And then we had our, our, our first promo card, the Charisma. Yeah. Hey. That uh, um, Ando, yeah, Ando drew, Andrew did the art for us. I think people like that. Uh, we still hand them out occasionally at events. Uh, most people don't want them. I think maybe have them by now. Uh, but, you know. It's always fun to have have little souvenirs to hang out and stuff like that. So that, that was a fun experience for that, us to hang, yeah. hang that out. I think this was also this was the first Arkham Knights that we did like a recap episode about mm-hmm. afterwards. So uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are pretty fun. Go back and listen to that if you want more details on uh, our Arkham Knights 2019 experience. Yeah. And then uh, the other thing that released in October was the murder at the Excelsior Hotel, which was uh, the first standalone we had gotten detached from Arkham Knights in a while, I think, and designed by. Uh, I don't remember if they were lead designer on it, but Nick from the Thosbusters, who I mm-hmm. think is now an actual employee at FFG, they got hired as a designer on Arkham. So I think we'll see more of his yeah, stuff. Congratulations, in, Nick! In future future campaigns, definitely still one of the most beloved uh, standalone scenarios. Oh, yes. I think everybody really hundred percent very very fun. One of the most beloved scenarios, just because it's so replayable. I still haven't seen all ten of the different mm-hmm. like second halves, so it's always, there's always Me new either. stuff yeah, that yeah. you can try to see. Yeah, it's fun just because it's it always it's very replayable and that and not, and not just a way it's like oh there's a new location or whatever it's like oh there's totally different objectives. So. I like testing decks, yeah. testing decks or teams with the Excelsior, so it's pretty good. Yeah, I think we we wove that into our like all guardian run campaign. Was that the was that yeah. what we did in 2019? <laughs> yeah, we did an all guardian yes. circle and done run, which mm-hmm. is really fun. Still one of my favorite Arkham memories. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, then in uh, December of 2019, uh, Dane and I went to PAX Unplugged, and I think this was the first, I want to say, like, kind of, quote-unquote, MUR run event where we ran a blob uh, there. Mm-hmm. And little did we know that that would be just about the last event that anyone would go to for quite a while. Yeah, but, I mean, that was fun. I don't remember what our turnout was. I think we had 20, 30 people there. Um, that was pretty good. We had 48 in oh, total, I think, it. across both You did days. a Friday and a Saturday Oh, that's right. You got, yeah. you did two games, right? And I, I just hang out helped with the first one, second one. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, and, and some folks came for both. Mm. I remember one guy had that cool MUR set, or the the not the MUR, the Santa Claus Arkham uh, Cthulhu mat, which was mm. really neat. Oh yeah, that the thing that Dan desperately wants to find. The Santa Claus, the Santa <laughs> yes. Claus mat. Yeah. The the was that the last play mat that was released for Arkham? The Holy yep. Grail. <laughs> There was a couple more, right? That released. There's been like way. promotional ones, like at Arkham Knights, they've handed them out. Yeah, like, there hasn't yeah. been like one yeah. that's available in retail since that. They've never made a second round of just like play mats that you can just buy in a game store. Yeah, yeah. And they must not have sold very well. Uh, maybe because they didn't pick from the very best art. I don't know. That was the thing we talked about for a long time. I was like, oh, this would be great art if only a great play, play mat. And then they're like copycat, and I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but that was the first event, and we've done a couple since then. You guys, you guys have run some locally. Yeah. Um, Shout out to like the portal and Wizard's Chest. You know, it's just good to kind of see mm-hmm. see people uh, in the yeah. local community and give out give out MUR promos because we just have so many. <laughs> Can hand those out. 
Yeah, I, I ran uh, I ran at Machinations last year at, at uh, Unplugged, and I've done an event at Arkham Knights before. Did Wotog there, so it's always fun to kind of organize them. It's a little stressful to just try to get everything together, like make sure you have table space, uh, keep everyone <laughs> going, decide like what is too many props to wear, um, and then go for <laughs> it anyway. Um, yeah, the limit does not exist. <laughs> just, so. just just be happy you weren't at the at the one I did at the uh, Wizards Chess where I did it where I did the whole thing. I moderated the whole thing in like a transatlantic accent. It was like so obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> and he recorded it. Yeah, it's uh, somewhere. That's good. Is that that somewhere. Available somewhere. That sounds <laughs> sounds like that'd be fun to check I'll, out. We'll post it somewhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was the end of 2019, which of course brought us into 2020 which was an eventful year for everyone. Uh, I started to try to grow facial hair. Uh, that was a major event in March 2020. Yeah, uh, we have that right on the timeline here, the beginning of Ben's <laughs> quarantine beard. The, perhaps the most important event. It was related. I don't remember exactly why I started growing it. Something I, I Oh, I got to start working from home. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ben, did you find that wearing the beard conferred upon you any kind of stat bonuses or augmented <laughs> abilities of any kind? Uh... No, I mean, maybe it made people, uh, I guess I was wearing a mask most of the time, so people couldn't yeah. really see the beard. <laughs> maybe it's a mask lot. Maybe people would be like, oh, maybe that person's not like 20 years old, and maybe they're slightly older, so they've got a little bit more respect, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or maybe they're like, oh, that person looks like a hobo, I don't want to talk to them, which that's a plus for me. I don't I don't want to talk to people usually. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we then did our first uh, stream of of an episode in May 2020, and if people delve into the archives there, they can see the abomination of my facial hair there. Uh, in our, <laughs> our first attempts at, at, at doing a, a live stream, we talked about what Dunwich Revisited. I think was that when the first Return Two came out. I realized I forgot to put the Return Twos on the timeline here. Oh, that's no. right. We'll never think, know. No, I think no, the blob, it was way earlier than because the Blob came out the same year as the Return to Carcosa, and I remember the art was mm. so scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's yes. just when we decided to chat about so it. So Dunwich must have come out when, I think Dunwich came out around Dream Eaters, maybe? A little bit before it? And we should maybe explain, we started doing the Twitch streams partly just because we thought it would be fun to interact with people, but also because doing the edited episodes uh, takes a really long time, mm. and it was really difficult yeah. to keep up with them. So we kind of, obviously the episodes like this that we actually record separately and edit uh, sound a lot better. But uh, we kind of switched for a while. We were trying to do like half and half, like half Twitch Twitch episodes that have worse audio, but whatever. It's fun. You get to hang out in the chat versus the edited ones that sound a lot better, but they take a lot of work for us to produce. And I think it mostly worked out. Sometimes we have some audio issues, but uh, usually, we've, usually we've gotten better at it. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a different experience than just like us hanging out where we're we're talking versus like uh, chatting with, with either fan, other fans of the game. So. Yeah, but the yeah, yeah, some some of them some of them really lent to having a chat, like watch and pay pay attention because like the uh, the player card episodes, I I, I watched, like, they were really fun. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, June twenty twenty, I got a, a several events here. Uh, I shaved I shaved the beard down to <laughs> my uh, kind of respectable facial hair that I I still am sticking with. The um, end of Ben's quarantine yeah. beard era and the beginning of the regular goatee era. <laughs> yeah. So, and we, we did our second Twitch stream, and then uh, we also, Harrison also joined on in a more official, an official capacity. Uh, hey, as, hooray! As, uh, as, as occasional host, he would come and join us on, on various episodes and, and helping us with our social media and, and trying to get people to, you know, like and subscribe to everything they can find at social.mer.fm, you know, so. Yep, smash that like <laughs> yeah, button, etc. Harrison's very good at doing that. Our community engagement guru. Uh, most of the time, it's just like a scheme for me to like slip in an Arkham Horror meme every once in a while. So it really worked <laughs> out. <laughs> that didn't go unnoticed, but you know, it's fine. You know, <laughs> Because you had either already started or maybe it was a little bit after this, you started doing the Arkham Horror memes, right? On Facebook and Twitter and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think that like almost the whole game, like I, people would like me and Brian David Sandbergs were like, were like meme meme rivals but i want to see when the first time it like it started on instagram because we're like around like 320 315 memes that's a lot of memes for one game that is a lot that is a lot of memes (laughs) that's quite a few memes and they were they're all fresh like not a not a lot of them were uh misses and by that i mean i can't remember if any of them were uh, and then the last thing in June is we did our first uh, streams of of live plays. I think Dan and I used um, technology to do that, and then Dan Harrison had an actual camera set up. 
Although I, I think one of those episodes got lost to time and didn't make it on YouTube, but um, mm. yeah, <laughs> um, I didn't download it in time from Twitch and Twitch deleted it. <laughs> oh no! But that was pretty fun. It was, uh, I mean, you know, it's good for good for people to see, uh, see, really see the thought process of how incredibly skilled players who never make mistakes or mm. forget the rules uh, are able <laughs> to play this game at a ridiculously high level. I just, I, I hope that that's inspirational to fans to to watch to watch that level of you know skill on display. And at an engaging pace. I don't know. It's oh, fun yeah. to stream. And, yeah, and rapidly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to stream. We, you know, we have some people that come on, hang out in chat and, and give us commentary. Sometimes they keep us honest where if we miss a rule interaction or whatever, they'll call us out, uh, which is fun. And if we do miss a rules interaction, people on YouTube very helpfully comment and tell us about it afterwards. They do. So it's very it's kindly. best when they do that politely. I, I do honestly yeah. appreciate it because I do want to try to play by the rules. Yeah, I know. As much as possible. Yes. But I, and then I have to mark my campaign log with the dreaded asterisk uh, retroactively. So... <laughs> but uh you know it, it's fun times so yeah and we've we've kept up the mr plays on, on and off since then i think uh doing we've started doing more uh custom campaigns yeah. more recently right yeah we've did, we did a bunch of them and, and we'll talk about some of those episodes we did later recently where we interviewed some people like we did uh dean and i did plague bearer recently and then harrison and i are currently doing alice in wonderland or it'll be probably it should be completed by the time this episode comes out so you know you can check that out on our youtube but um what else did we, do? we did the dinosaur campaign. Um, Ages, Ages unwound. Ages unwound, and um, at least one more, I think. Did, did, did we stream Dark Matter? No, you guys just played that. No, we, we did, did not. I, I feel like at some point I might make Dan stream Dark Matter with me because it's highly recommended. That one's fun. I can tell how excited <laughs> Dan is to do more <laughs> to do that. <laughs> uh, it's a good time. Someone like released like a fancy trailer for it recently, so. But uh, yeah, so uh, escaping from June, uh, we launched our Patreon in in july of 2020 to to basically help yeah. try to cover a little bit of the cost of like the website and stuff um so uh, that was fun that was cool we we should also maybe just just mention briefly because the, the next thing we're going to talk about is a product releasing this was like the longest gap between stuff mm-hmm. releasing basically ever right yeah it was, it was yeah. because of the beard situation um caused yeah some delays. <laughs> beard, beard related uh world events yeah. had had caused some delays to the supply chain but yeah this was like i we were just waiting for that last mythos pack from dream eaters it felt like forever right for like four months yeah and dream eaters was already the set where it's like you forget what your p- team was doing yeah, because exactly. they released it dreamlands then waking world dreamlands waking world so like you totally forgot what your investigators were doing anyway <laughs> and then there was like a four month gap between the last pack and and uh this the penultimate pack. yeah, so. that, yeah. Was, that was kind of rough uh yeah so that that next project was kind of the the first of a couple new uh types of products for arkham uh this was the investigator starter decks Ooh. which we saw five new investigators i think t- Two or three that were new to the IP. I can't remember. Stella, Nathaniel. Stella, oh, three. And Winifred. Stella, Nathaniel, and yeah. Winnie. Yep. And it was kind of a, a big injection. It was basically a campaign's worth of cards all at once. And they were all like very tightly themed around the investigators. And it was a good way to like, so, oh, I could buy a core set. And I could buy like one or two investigator packs to actually have playable decks with the core set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was huge. It was it was, as Nigel Thornberry would say, smashing. <laughs> It's a, it's a deep cut. So <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, man. So, uh, uh, hey, I need to process that for a minute. You see, my dad hosts his nature show. Well, do, do you guys think, uh, I mean, do you guys think they might make another round of these at some point? I, I think that'd be cool, but I'm not sure if we should expect it or not. I hope so. I hope, yeah. These, I think these were so well received. People love these things. Yeah, I, I think they're good. I don't know if they will, I feel like they won't do them very often. Maybe we'll do them as a as a release of like core investigators with new cards or something. I, I don't know because they're almost out of like existing IP investigators, and it's like an extra couple steps of the process to make new new characters, right? Like we've talked to MJ about that and and Co. When we've interviewed them, you know what they might do that would be really cool? Maybe they'll start bringing in like uh, characters from other realms, like say Warhammer 40k. <laughs> Maybe they'll start just bringing no, in Warhammer no. 40k characters as investigators no. as a special. They don't product. own that. They do own Marvel, though. I think or or Transformers yeah. even. Maybe there will be like like Optimus Prime could be an investigator in this game. I think that would be a really great idea. <laughs> and not the stupidest thing ever. Does FFG so I, I hope... <laughs> own Android or Netrunner? 
um, identities. See, there's there's the oh, good okay, idea. Okay, okay, that actually would be great if they wanted there's to just start. If they wanted to just start putting in like 1920s versions of the Android uh, characters Max. in here, that do it. I take back all. I take back all of the shade I was just throwing. Please do that. I will buy all of it. It's something, it sounds <laughs> the art is just the same art, but it has like a fedora and a trench coat added onto every one of them. <laughs> but if they but if they try to do this with like Legend of the Five Rings crap, absolutely, I'll be very angry. Does Legend of the Five so, Rings? Still I'll be exist. very excited for it. No. That canceled. They stopped yeah, making it, but it, they, it exists as an RPG system. They still own the rights to it, I think. I mean, they're still doing Lord of the Rings. Is it just Lord of the Rings and Arkham now? Oh, and Marvel. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, we can get X Men, Star Wars. We can get X Men investigators. If they wanted to put Star Wars in here, also that I would I would have conflicted feelings about, but I think I would come around on it. <laughs> you can take that from us, FFG. So speaking of speaking of weird April Foolsy <laughs> kind of products that actually became real. Yeah. Uh, September 2020, <laughs> we saw Barkham Horror. Which was yeah, an yeah, April yeah. Fool's joke earlier in the year <laughs> Just like or Calvin. the year before, like Calvin. <laughs> um, when yep. was that? Was that 2020? It was It was a joke product and then was actually released? No, it must have been 2019. Uh, something, yes. something like that. 2019's our uh, April Fool's. It was 2019. April April 2019. And then yep, somehow it became April our product Fools. and I played it once and it was it was basically a bunch of dog puns and cat puns. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> it was great. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, we haven't really seen it much since then. I, I think it might have been like an extra thing thrown into the schedule that kind of probably taxed, taxed the designers a bit. Uh, but they're expanding their team yeah. now, so maybe, maybe we'll see more of it. I don't know. I mean, for how cute this specific thing was, this is like the last time I remember hearing like global complaints about people being able to find oh, yeah. some sort mm, of Arkham product. That's true. Because I remember that Barkham Horror... People were like, I can't find this thing anywhere. Like, where is it? Like, is this, they've only printed, like, one run of it or something like that. It was a really fundraising sure. campaign, right? Like, for... I think some, yeah. some money went to some animal charity, right? That's nice. Yes. Shelters. And but it was a limited... It was a limited run. Like, they, they have no intention of printing more. Maybe you can... Can you get them from, like, Game Center now? Like, you can with the... Like, printed out. Parallel stuff? Maybe. I don't think so. I, I still have not played it, but one, one day I will. You can sniff. Sniff as a mechanic. They should have made scratch and sniff cards. That would have been fun. <laughs> it's the only way you can play uh, Kate right now, right? Uh, yep. Isn't Kate one of the dogs? Kate? Yep. Oh, yeah. When, when if, I don't remember the dog. Some pun. sort of weird pun. <laughs> Kate Winthpup. Winthpup. Yeah, Pup. yeah Kate is. Winthpup. Uh, but yeah, and then 2020, that was another exciting thing for us is when we, we got a couple official card previews for the Innsmouth Deluxe Box that, that we got to share with folks. That was cool. Yeah. So, you know, that was kind of fun. Was FFG kind of acknowledged just a bit more uh, and gave us a chance to share stuff with the community. So, and we kind of kept up doing that since then, I think, for the most part. They ramped it up yeah. a lot for Scarlet Keys. Oh, yeah. Like, they gave oh, yeah. not just us, oh, yeah. but everybody got a lot of spoilers, which was really fun. Like, the whole preview season this year has been a really good time. Yeah, yeah. Age of the Earth, they, they had like 10 ish different people that had cards, but it wasn't anywhere close to as many that were mm-hmm. given out for uh, yeah. Scarlet Keys. For Scarlet Keys, they spoiled like three quarters of the player cards or something like that, something which is pretty like, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. like, like two yeah. thirds of them. And, and that was mostly through the community versus like articles, which I think has been debated whether it was better or not, but I, I think it was fun, at least for us and, and hopefully people that, that came and hung out to discuss the cards so well the articles are yeah. hard right because yeah, totally. like we they'd come with the mythos pack and it doesn't really isn't really a thing so i'm glad yeah who, who knows what's going on with ffg right now if they <laughs> haven't bought but like the cor- mega corporation that owns them got bought by a different mega corporation which i think got bought by an even bigger mega corporation so sounds very cyberpunk <laughs> we should just be very happy that we still have arkham going on um again when we yep. see that mask uh <laughs> then that's that's what we need to worry so yeah, and then uh, 2020, we saw Innsmouth Conspiracy came out, uh, 2020 of October, that is, and we also launched a Discord server, you know, got with the times from like three years ago, and, uh, you know, it's fun to hang out there and chat about <laughs> cards and stuff. Yeah. we uh, I think that was that was when we finally abandoned Google Hangouts or whatever to, to use to communicate with each other. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> kind of what he's Discord. I gotta say, and, and Innsmouth, uh, Innsmouth, really, really good. Like, it was definitely one that kind of grew on me a lot. Like, I think... My initial reaction was sort of, you know, relatively measured, but like the more I played it, the more I've, I've enjoyed it. It's really good. I like the non-linear format. I don't like the way that XP works because I just don't understand it. I know you guys hate that, but it is maybe like tied with Carcosa. I think it's maybe my favorite kind of like narrative of flow of any of the campaigns. I think it's definitely very cool. Um, I like the memory flashbacks. The, the balance of story text is maybe a little bit better in Innsmouth than compared to uh, the last couple of campaigns before. Also pretty good investigators, right? Like uh, Amanda, Amanda's really great. Amanda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Silas was officially released from I was it. like, Sister Mary? Yeah, we got Dexter, Silas. That was the release of the Blessed and Cursed Tokens. 
Oh yeah, which was like the first yes. time we kind of saw like a which were also really, really neat new mechanic, right? And it's still pretty popular. We've gone back and forth on whether we like think blessed tokens are good or not. Or at least I have. Um, and and the, <laughs> whether curse tokens matter or not. I lo- I love the curse token. It's definitely yeah. a fun injection of of new mechanic and showed us that oh yeah they can keep doing new new st- weird stuff with this game. So yeah yeah totally definitely. And then let's see November twenty twenty Dane and Harrison departed New England right and moved to to colorado splitting us into the three <laughs> different time zones to record it right <laughs> three time zones which is obviously not a logistical nightmare at all so <laughs> but uh yeah it left me as last one standing and still representing new england uh for the time uh and then december 2020 we saw war of the outer gods released which i believe was intended to be the gen con and arkham knight scenario that year but tragically due to um beard issues we couldn't get together to play it <laughs> um but but there was uh communities online that kind of came together to, so we were able to play it kind of experience it online at least and that that was good i like war of the Lottie guards I've, as i said i've run it uh since then i think uh dane was telling me that some people have come up with some custom variations on it mm-hmm. which might be at arkham knights this year specific tofu mushroom yeah i mean we're uh we're recording this before we go to Arkham Knights, so I'm not, we'll see what's there. So. I like saying Wotog. Wotog. It's just, it's just fun. It's a fun, yeah. fun way to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wotog. So next next big event, uh, April 2021, we launched the sister podcast, right? Levy University Cybercast, beginning of that month. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But tragically, it was the only episode, and I don't know why. I so guess, far. Yeah, I mean, you guys tried to explain that game to me, and I... Just, Time time goes slower in the future. Yeah, right? exactly. Well, yeah, the, it's yeah, is that it's, mathematically accurate? Does time continue? Well, is time always constantly is getting slightly slower? It's complicated. Or is it getting slightly faster? Or is it kind of? I mean, some back? people some people would say that time keeps on slipping, slipping, <laughs> slipping into the future. So it's sort of it's sort of, that's kind of the vibe that that I think we were going Quote for. Albert and uh, we sh- we should shout out Dane's very excellent uh, cyberpunk uh, opening and closing music for that podcast. Mm-hmm. Is very oh very yeah, good. that was that was so fun to put together. Yeah. And uh, Nisei rebranded as Null Signal recently. They're still putting out more Netrunner cards, so Netrunner is still still alive in some form. I mean, do you, yes. do you play it anymore, Dan, or do you give up? Why would you ask me a question <laughs> that you know is going to hurt me and make me sad? Then, <laughs> because we're such good friends, we're such good friends, Dan. That's that's how relationships work. <laughs> Look, Ben, if you wanna if you wanna move out to California and play Netrunner with me, I'm not gonna say no. You can do that if you want, but uh, uh, I'll I'll, I'll look into it. We'll we'll see. There's uh, a magical girl ID, so you should... <laughs> I really like that. Princess Space. Is Kid that a selling or... point for me, or is that a selling point? I don't for Dan? know. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above, or just Dan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, Netrunner is still an incredible, amazing card game. That's my last. That's my. Oh, yeah. That's my last take on this. Yeah, I'm sure Wizards of the Coast yeah. is making good use of the IP, right? <laughs> they have RPG. Right. Yeah. So yeah. up next, yeah. Ben. <laughs> 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 up next. Ooh, so uh, May 2021, I believe, is when I began to t- live technically in new jersey uh so which is definitely not part of new england so nobody definitely. nobody from the cast Extremely was left, not part of new england <laughs> was left to represent in new england to the the home of arkham most of arkham scenarios. all left the homeland so yeah we have colin uh still in the area that's true. As kind of a mascot that's true he is still you in know? boston and he's been he's been on the podcast now so there you go i i might move back there next year or the year after or something oh, we'll see. okay so we'll... you know maybe maybe we'll bring it back maybe we can bring it home eventually uh i see september 2021 harrison committed to the arkham <laughs> for life uh we got a tattoo right you want to talk about that <laughs> It just says Arkham for life. <laughs> so, like I've never, like all my tattoos, I've only ever thought about for like a day or a week. So uh, <laughs> I didn't really think about it that much. But I super love. I mean, I like playing rogues. So I got a. I mean, I'm showing you, but I'm I I got a rogue tattoo on my forearm, and uh, it's usually pretty fun to go to conventions and see if anybody recognizes it. Yeah, it's just a picture of Skids' face, right? Yeah. See, I, I, I assumed that you'd been, like, arrested and locked up for something, and, like, your cellmate Skids O'Toole had, like, given you that ink as, like, a, I don't know, you know? That's that's a lot <laughs> more of a hard story, like, a harder, more metal story <laughs> than, like, this is a niche card game that, like, that I've been playing for. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I play with Dane, I'm usually a guardian, and, um, unfortunately, uh, just because of some political things, I don't really want a giant big blue police police badge tattoo on my forearm so i decided not to do that but <laughs> yeah, i really like right. it. good choice good choice i have the seeker logo tattooed uh, on my brain which is the most secret part of my body so no, no one no one can see it externally but it's there oh boy 
Yeah, so, uh, and then October 2021, a couple bigger things for the game. We saw the release of the revised core set, um, which was the Yay. kind of the, the herald for the, the upcoming change in the Arkham release cycles. But that got more people into the game. It had a more reasonable uh, way to buy a product. You didn't have to buy two copies of it for no reason. I know. Uh, to be able to play. <laughs> I was going to say... That changed. That changed everybody's first take on the on the core set, which was I need another box. <laughs> now it's I have the box. Yeah. It's there's a lot of space in it. There's an extra chaos bag mm. in it. You know, there's a lot of stuff. In New that. art for a lot of classic cards. Yeah, yeah. a first player to, or a lead investigator token. Oh yeah, Dane, Dane's never favorite. in the game before. And it, it, they also they took some cards from other mm-hmm. sets that we kind of feel like are staples and threw them in there, like Relic Hunter and Charisma and such. And there's some yep. other ones, but. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good refresher in the game. It was also like one of like uh, twelve times that Dane has declared, or Dane or Harrison has declared, the game was dead. It's because that's that's what happened before Network was canceled, right? They released a new revised core set or something like that, right? But we're we're still here. Trauma. At least one year later. <laughs> one thing I appreciate about the core set is that you know they reimagined what the investigators look like. Mm-hmm. And they're actually starting to use like uh what was that what's that I'll take this card used uses the new art skids in it too. So um mm. oh yeah, things are evolving. <laughs> yeah, I mean they might have run dry of their uh st- pile of stock art so they're using <laughs> mostly new art for things these days and I feel like they're nowhere close. That's a still. that's a fun idea for a stream we could do would be to like find art from previous Arkham <laughs> Files products that hasn't been used yet uh, in this game and try to guess what card it could be. Yeah, actually yeah, they're definitely reusing art because I think the Scarlet Keys. I think there was oh, yeah. a whole Call of Cthulhu uh, cycle that yeah. was like oh, yeah. themed around yep. that or something. Yep. That's what a lot oh, yeah. of the 100%. a lot of the conspiracy theorists for Scarlet Keys have like pulled all the quarterly cards from mm. from that cycle. And, uh, so maybe they maybe they haven't run dry yet, but you know when they do get new art, I think they you could tell <laughs> there's the newer models on there. Still haven't decided what Wendy looks like though. I don't think I think pretty sure she looks different every single <laughs> card. She's somewhere between ages 6 and 60. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Officially an alien at this point? <laughs> Just like a, um, in a, some amalgamation that's constantly between the ages of 9 and 13. Maybe, is there some type of Cthulhu creature, like a doppelganger? Maybe that's what Wendy is this whole time. She's mm. yeah, <laughs> some type of shape <laughs> I mean, Amanda's kind of a fish person, maybe. So maybe Wendy's yeah. something like that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. So the uh, other thing in October, Arkham Knights came back. It was kind of more a little bit more of a limited event. Like I think they cut the number of people that could go in half because it was it is was still um, you know beard times, right? We're still trying to get that sorted out. Um, so they they tried to keep people spaced out. I ran a Wotog event there, uh, as mentioned. I used the correct number of props when doing that, and then we, we did the trivia contest. There was no colonist here and no Harrison. Um, we were very sad that we had no Harrison because uh, he's, he's like obscure Arkham lore trivia expert. Uh, <laughs> well, we texted him all the questions afterward. I think he got like 19 out of 20 or something. <laughs> he, got, he got all. He, we would have, we definitely would have had so, like, so, yeah. if he were Dainty Donahue's guns. I think that's the one. And yep, unfortunately, that was one I don't think he or Dane are making it this year to Arkham Knights. So uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to find some. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to raise. decide if I should like take it take one for the team and rapidly read all of the novellas before we go just just just, just for this probably not probably too much other stuff going on nah, that's fine uh, they're fun <laughs> wasn't the other thing that premiered at this arkham knights was unfathomable right uh unfathomable released in 2021 i don't know if it premiered at arkham knights but it was the first time it was at arkham knights um, okay, okay. It, might, it might have been they might have had it there as a preview actually you came back with unfathomable cards. i think they did yeah yeah they give us some promo cards. They give us a bunch of like alt art, uh, and by alt art I mean they, like they change the the contrast on the card slightly of like for every <laughs> oh, yeah, single yeah, yeah. arc of game. Oh, yeah, and the card named Bob Jenkins definitely had Rex Murphy <laughs> yeah. on it in the art. Oh yeah, good. The Arkanized twenty twenty one. I got the impression they had to throw together like two weeks ahead of time, and like nobody told anybody anything. <laughs> Including anyone that wanted oh, to attend. that's right, because they didn't reach out to anybody. Yeah, like, until like two weeks before. There's like a, an 80-90% chance they didn't tell anybody until they, they released the article. You know, it's like when they announced a show was canceled or a movie has been canceled and they didn't tell anybody. The whole Warner Brothers <laughs> thing, like, recently is an example. 
where the and it's like, oh, we got to find out it was canceled. Oh or man, it was happening at the same time everybody else did. <laughs> That's what happened with Arkham. I forgot about that whole aspect of it because we we had like this this shanty, broken down little like apartment in like this college <laughs> part of part of town that was just like I slept on the couch because like the the bottom of the bed that I was I I picked was like ripped apart and there were like probably like weird aliens Not living good. in it and. <laughs> It was wild. In retrospect, I, I look upon those memories fondly because they embody the whole vibe of the Innsmouth conspiracy, <laughs> right? I feel like there's definitely a moment for anybody that uh for anybody that's like from the east or west coast where you travel to the midwest and you just everything's a little bit off <laughs> and uh you know it, it can take a little bit of sanity damage, I think, from from sure. normal relatively normal experiences. So that that's fun. Yeah. It's probably right. the same the other way when people travel to the coast. It's by a whole other world, right? I don't no, know. probably not. <laughs> uh, Arkham Knights, yeah, we played Machinations Through Time. I think that was the premiere, or did was there a Gen Con? I don't remember. But uh, that was the premiere there, I think, of that. And Dane uh, completed a four-year-long quest, I want to say, or maybe five years, to get a pro- promo of Draw to the Flame, or a second copy of it, to complete the set. When Duke, like, casually strolled over to us and was like, oh, you guys want any promo cards? And he, like, pulled them out of his pocket. And, like, <laughs> pulled, them pulled like, a mildly bent <laughs> copy out of, his, out of his pocket. He was like, oh, here you and go. I think that confirmed our suspicion that they do, in fact, have an entire warehouse just filled with promo cards. They, they just have boxes of those <laughs> sitting around. It was sort of like the Arkham Knights version of uh, when they finally gave Chewie a medal at the end of the Terrible Night. <laughs> movie. You know, it's sort of like that. It was like, this has been a long time coming, but you got to make up for yeah. last time to finally do it. <laughs> Nobody asked for it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. So then um, end of the year, November and December, we saw the Edge of the Earth Investigator and then Campaign Expansions <laughs> release, which was the new release model. Well, and what was fun about this was it was a return to the old days of trying to find some random game store that has a copy of the thing in stock because inexplicably the the release kept getting delayed in the US but everywhere else had it. So I think we all like imported it from Canada. Oh, that's right. we it did. Yes, yeah, we, we did. I forgot we got about it that. From Canada, which I think was frowned upon, um but yes. uh, yeah, we got got copies in September, but the actual campaign we don't think we got any earlier, did we? We, no, we, we got it a little it, earlier, I maybe think. Maybe, like, we got it in November. I don't know. But, yeah, like, you, me and, and Dan and Dane and Colin? Or, no, it was, it was me, Dan, Colin, and Kim. We played over, like, two uh, very very aggressive weekends. We <laughs> yeah, one of which involved a train trip. That was <laughs> fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, should convene in half in New Hampshire and half, half in New Jersey to play through that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, it was the new release model. I think we're still taking in like the the benefits, the pros and cons. I mean, a, a big con that maybe we didn't talk about too much at the time was like absolute drought of Arkham content <laughs> between between <laughs> releases. Yeah, but it is also nice to have the whole thing at once. That's the thing. Like, it's a bummer to not have Arkham stuff for most of a year, apart from maybe like a standalone. But it's so much better to just be able to play the campaign all the way through within like a month and not have to wait a month between every single scenario. Like, that's just that really is really good. I think one drawback to that that format, and I was talking about this earlier, is just like how ridiculous your deck looks like by the end of uh, any of the previous campaigns, because like you went off to Venice or you you got a night gaunt somewhere <laughs> else, like. I remember yeah. my deck had like at least like 15 or 16 story assets not related to the campaign and there's not really that much incentive to go off to go off to like a hotel in that one but <laughs> definitely a cool campaign. I think I I've still I think I've still only played it twice so I'm still kind of looking forward to play it more and you know yeah, see, played see what it, I think about it. I think three times but uh and, and yeah, I played it three times and I got the same people that died off randomly <laughs> every single time i think right oh that and is so funny infuriated. maybe i've only played it twice uh but i can't possibly have the same people three times in a row can i could that have happened i think that's what happened some of the characters like trying to figure out if you want to like keep certain ones alive or which ones bring with you to compliment you is fun the story is like interesting obviously we had already played uh tim's uh betrayal at the mountains of madness so we had something to compare it to mountains of madness wise but up until then, we were desperate for some amounts of this content officially. So, and they had interesting investigators in that uh, we can never ever remember what their deck name is. We try to talk about them. So, so February uh, twenty twenty two, big event, 
Kamigawa Neon Dynasty released. I don't know what this is. Why is this on here? It's kind of like the sequel to Netrunner in a certain <laughs> sense. Uh, <laughs> Dan, why do you say things that hurt me? <laughs> it's it's very very funny. That's why. <laughs> Um, no i i don't know i i do just i find it really funny the way that like this was the kind of like fun punchline at the end of the whole like wait why did they stop making netrunner conversation right because like that was a mystery for a while right and it's still kind of a mystery in the sense that there's no official explanation but like let's be honest we we know exactly why wait so is this a wizards of the coast (laughs) product yes yes it is a it is a magic the gathering expansion set that is sort of cyberpunk themed and the theory is that they were like wait a minute, why would we let some other company make a cyberpunk card game using RIP when several years from now we're planning to make a single expansion for Magic, which is probably going to outsell every Netrunner product ever made at, at once, which it probably did. <laughs> I thought FFG still has the Android IP and it was just... They, the, they have the, the Android game. IP. They don't have the Netrunner IP. I, I thought that Two was like things. a game model or something, not an actual idea. Netrunner, the Netrunner IP is like the rules of the game, like the idea oh. of like ice, ice and icebreakers and running and so stuff like that. Is this like the general love class mythos versus like the Arkham Files IP type of thing? Kind of. I don't know if they. I don't know if it's like a perfect analogy, yeah. but kind of. Did Kamigawa have like anything that smelled like like the Netrunner game, like? Did they even? I mean, it, it had the, the card that I always post to annoy Dane is there's a card called Moon Circuit Hacker. There's like, there's, there's like, there's, there's cards that have like vaguely chip and cyber themed kind of, you know. Okay. I don't know. But it's not like they had like a mechanic that was run, like. Make a run? Net <laughs> yeah. No, there wasn't anything like that. Nobody actually really, nobody actually really cares about this, but I just think as, as Netrunner players, I think it's extremely funny that this is how Netrunner died. Like the thing that you really loved so much and thought was so cool got killed kind of like barely even intentionally as like a byproduct of a much larger corporation making something dumber you know like it's just kind of yes, funny. it seems that like a nice right. analogy for for like the exactly it's theme. it's very cyberpunk <laughs> right <laughs> like it was the most cyberpunk way for netrunner to die at the end god of the damn end it of it. <laughs> you're right i'm sad there was an earlier Netrunner scandal where some people kind of hacked into the Netrunner DB website to like find other people's deck lists before a tournament. And it was like, that's kind of a shitty thing to do, but also very cyberpunk, right? So, you know. <laughs> True. Uh, we saw a lot of changes in 2022 to the podcast, the, the first of which was in April. Dane and Dan uh, temporarily were replaced by my friends Nick and Gemma. We, we talked about uh, Pokemon for a whole episode. <laughs> I think probably the best ever received episode, I assume. I didn't look at any numbers, but uh, that was a good time. I can't remember. Did did you temporarily rename it like some Pokemon themed name or uh, did it just keep the same name? I don't think so. I think I think I just said you guys got replaced if <laughs> we t- talked yeah. about Pokemon for an hour. There's some university in the Pokemon games, right? Like, yeah. there's a lot of professors. Like, where did Professor Oak and Professor Elm and everybody, where did they teach? Ah, uh, Pallet Town. Or where did they know. get their degrees? <laughs> I, don't I don't know that much about their lore. No, we talked about like you're still talking about Arkham. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the Arkham investigators and like who their Pokemon partner would be. So right, when we but it was mostly talking about like obscure Pokemon facts and how those somehow applied to the investigator, except for Sufina, which was just the Pokemon that paints or whatever. But there's a new one. Ben, now. there's yeah. a um custom campaign I think that was made. Yeah, for... uh, oh yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, played I played it. I played it with Nick, who was on there one of the people that was on there with us oh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like a take on like the original games like slammed in with arkham it was all right it has a lot of like custom stuff because it's like oh you can get the pokemon as allies and you can like summon them because mm. your your trainers are actually magic users that summon monsters or whatever aren't but they kind of scary neat. like they're not they're not like pull, pulley ripped from yeah the anime. it has it has kind of like horror versions of the pokemon that's cool it, i think i mean pokemon's a big enough ip that somebody has drawn horrifying basically Lovecraftian versions of every Pokemon, and then you start from that. Right. So, yeah. That was a good time. You guys came back a little bit afterward. Um, so yeah, I had very, to, very good episode. Yeah. So I had to ban Nick and Gemma. Uh, they were very sad about it. They were <laughs> tears, but you know, we had to take them out of the studio. Like, oh, you know, the old guys are back. So, <laughs> yep. It's like Josh Klinghoffer. But we did did a couple more episodes, and then in June, uh, we announced uh, on the blog, I don't think we actually announced in the podcast that. People have actually listened to it. I don't know if they people go yeah, to the blog. If, if you but... if you only listen to the podcast uh, and you you never check the blog or the Discord or anything, and you've been confused about why there haven't been many episodes lately, uh... yeah. So we we announced we were kind of going on a semi sporadic hiatus. We we're gonna do episodes as much. We like shut down the Patreon and um, just kind of did episodes every every month or so. 
but uh the basic idea is that uh we we're gonna we're gonna stop doing a semi-reliable every two weeks uh cadence to the episodes uh we will probably do a lot fewer episodes just because it takes a lot of time and we're all very busy i think we're we're still planning to put out new videos and episodes here and there when we have time but just not not on a fixed schedule um, and I think we're going to keep MUR plays going also, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think it's just we're not doing episodes every two weeks. It might might be more yeah. official episodes yeah. every month or so or every two months as we as we do stuff. Yeah, basically just as we have time. Like, I think we're probably going to do at least a couple of episodes about Scarlet Keys mm-hmm. stuff this fall, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like this definitely came about, by the way, because like Edge of the Earth, the whole campaign model changed. Yeah. And we were like, oh man, we have so many cards to talk about. I don't know how to talk about this many cards. <laughs> and then we were like trying to figure out the orientation of like how the episodes would look. Yeah. And then after that whole craze, and we like finally got out all those episodes, we were like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the new release model. So that was is, like the first thing. The new release model on balance is really good, but it definitely just made it <laughs> tough for us because we had like a ton of new cards to review last fall and, and winter. And then suddenly, like the early part of this year, we were just like, what do we do an episode about? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It makes it a bit rougher, but, uh, you know, we'll still around. We still have the discord. Yeah. Come, come hang out yeah, on yeah, discord. Still, still doing MR plays. I think subscribe so. to YouTube, subscribe to Twitch, smash that like button, <laughs> uh, favorite comment, subscribe, all that kind of jazz. Send us handwritten letters telling us which episodes you like best. You know? <laughs> I would actually, yeah, please yeah, do that. that. I'll write you back. <laughs> I mean, what was also great was we announced this, and then, like, three days later, uh, FFG was like, hey, here's a whole bunch of cards to preview for us. <laughs> yeah. So we still yeah. did, ep- we oh, still yeah. were doing episodes every two weeks or so. Uh, and an investigator. Yeah, an investigator. Yeah. I think most of those episodes did end up as podcast episodes, or at least half podcast episodes that people can listen to, but they're otherwise on YouTube. There was one or two that the audio got really messed up, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that they're mostly there. So that was fun. Um, yeah, we got to preview Daryl, which was very exciting. Just to do a new investigator reveal. The golden boy himself. Of course, after we previewed Daryl, I think like a ton of cards that Daryl <laughs> really likes to use got revealed. So we didn't have the full picture. So I think we'll still talk about him again uh, whenever we get around to doing like an investigator's Scarlet Keys episode. Yeah, you, you always really want to see like the full set of cards mm-hmm. in order to have the context for, uh, for what the investigators are going to be like. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. That's getting us close to to the present day. So in September, the expansion was released, which at the time of recording was like a couple days ago. Yep. So I haven't gotten a chance to actually delve into all the cards yet, but um, there I've looked at some of them, and there's a lot there's a lot of different interesting patterns there. So the customizable, um, there's a the dilemma stuff that we did a card preview on. Uh, the new investigators are all mostly interesting. Like the, some of them are like kind of played very differently than what we've seen before. So yeah, I'm very excited to check out the cards, and we'll probably, I'm sure we'll be playing them at Arcanites in some capacity. Yeah. For all you Carson haters out there, I'm yeah. going to be playing Dan's very excited about Carson. First scenario. I think Dan is not. Is that, is that accurate? I do not understand what Carson is for or what he's supposed to do. I am so excited to play him with you, Dan. I am not excited for I that. guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you someone right now is doing a, a solo Carson campaign right now <laughs> yeah. i don't know how he does in solo it, it, i do see how he'll do in multiplayer his ability only works on other people isn't it we'll, we'll talk about that later i guess but yeah it's like the people that like beat dark souls staying at level one the whole time or something it's very impressive <laughs> but it's also like naked with like the club or something. you are not a normal human you know like <laughs> if this is you oh, if yeah, you're listening yeah. right now and you have <laughs> played a solo carson campaign just jump on our discord and we'll send you promos or something <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm interested to see how they all play out. I have to look at the full card pool. I I mean, I don't think any of them are necessarily bad. Like, Harrison and I have been playing Daryl and Charlie in Alice in Wonderland, and the campaign's probably complete by the time this episode's out. And both of them have been very good. Mm-hmm. Charlie initially was like, oh, this kind of seems kind of weird, but I think he's been doing very good. Yep. So I'm sort of expecting the same thing from, like, Vincent and Carson and Kamani and uh, Amina. So we'll see how they play out. But yeah, now now here we are, October 2022, uh, episode 100. Woo. Uh, I mean, it's technically episode like Yay. 101, <laughs> um, but don't tell Dane. We did it! Hooray! Be very sad, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> fun, fun, fun times. Good, good job, us. Yay, wow, triple digits. 
So, I mean, that's it for the timeline. <laughs> I, I think it's very impressive that I haven't been hit by a car while riding my bicycle and killed before we could reach this milestone. So I'd like to, that, I'd like well, to, that got about as dark as circle. I'd, I'd like to congratulate myself for, for that not happening. To I mean, me. have you successfully been hit by a car and survived though? But you have, I know I, Ben, yeah. Ben has survived. Yeah. It. Yeah. Oh my God, man. Like, that's, <laughs> what? that's a pretty important uh, tier to obtain in, in biking, right? But, but you also you also gave up riding your bike almost immediately well, afterwards because right? my bike so. did not survive. The... Well, okay, <laughs> uh, I've done a little bit of biking. I'm trying to get more into biking again. I have to buy a bike. Uh, Good stuff. Know, I I told you like this summer we t- I passed on. I taught someone how to ride a bike. Nice, so, you yeah. know um, the knowledge. So it, we're we're getting back there. So I think um so so having kind of wrapped up the timeline we want to just do a couple of uh, a couple of shout outs and then a quick lightning round. So mm. let let me I, I just want to offer a a quick thanks to all of the many excellent guests that we've had on the mm-hmm. podcast over the years. So uh roughly roughly in order of of appearance. So our friend Alex who has been on 3 episodes, uh Harrison before he became a official host and part of the podcast, uh Graham from Shipment from Shiloh and the Paladcast De- Detective Agency. Cardbot, of course. Woo. Dan A. MJ, of course, who's been on four episodes, which I believe is the uh, the current leader. Tim Fletcher. <laughs> uh, Tim from I've Got a Plan. So two Tims. Jeremy Zwern. Uh, Patrick Wayne, a.k.a. Blue HG. Jefferson. Jeff Lee Johnson. Nick and Gemma uh, from the Pokemon episode. Uh, Walker of Tales, Olivia Juliet, and Ashalotl from, uh, from our recent episode where we interviewed a few different uh, custom campaign creators. Uh, the legendary Colin, aka Software Kid, who finally made an appearance on the podcast very recently after being hyped for a long time, and uh, Josiah Duke Harris, also pretty recent. So big thanks to all of those uh, excellent people. We had a great time hanging out with all of them. Uh, we also want to thank our patrons that kind of helped us, uh, you know, offset a lot of our costs, including the site, and uh, had a lot of discussions on our Discord. So uh, without further ado, we have Sean G. We have Elspeth, Jefferson, uh, Derek M, Daniel A, Justin, Brandon T, Mark Z, Richard U, Picky Man, uh, totally real name, I think, Paul L, Phil W, Brian M, Tim D, Bipartisan, Chad R, DDC, and Matthew S. So thank you again so much, you know, for engaging with us and just showing us like how much you wanted to support us with your money. So thank you. Yeah, thanks so much to everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you to everyone. I yeah. hope I got everybody on that list, because uh, we did close down the Patreon a couple months ago. We did the <laughs> hiatus, so I kind of lost the list, so I had to try to find it for our emails and stuff. But if I miss, if we missed anybody, please send an angry letter directly to <laughs> Dane. So. Handwritten, please. We'll respond. <laughs> yeah. We always talked about trying to do more cool stuff uh, that was like exclusive to to patrons, and we we did some of it, but like we 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 I think we like never quite managed to do as much stuff as we wanted to. But people were still really great. It was really great to have that support, so we really appreciate it. Yeah, I think I think the other thing that I also wanted to just kind of shout out too is just like the Arkham community in general. Looking at this timeline kind of puts it in perspective. Kind of remembering that Dan and I started being like, well, there's only like two podcasts for this game now right so like we'll we'll kind of get in early we'll, and we'll be, be in the top to, like, three at the very least <laughs> have a pretty you know resounding voice uh you know among everybody right and then it's gotten exponentially huge right like we've got youtube channels who do quality content we've got blogs that are constantly updated with like really interesting like statistics details we've got a huge custom content following and folks over at mysterious chanting who just constantly crank out new campaigns that you can play even even like during the dry season where there's no campaigns being produced so like huge shout out to everybody and thank you for to like people who just keep this community alive i think uh i think we were also for a while we kind of were slotted as the kind of like serious like theory crafting kind of min maxing like podcast which oh yeah well well, lending is terrible (laughs) which we 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 certainly did some of that but but i think we did other stuff too but uh for a while that was kind of like our corner and now i think there's a lot of really great analysis along those lines happening all over the place too so i feel like um the whole community has just really grown and expanded a lot yeah agreed just kind of to round this out let's do a lightning round so for each of the following each coast is going to give a quick answer Let's just start from the top. What is your favorite campaign? As discussed earlier, it's really tough. I'm still going to say Carcosa just for old time's sake. The one that I would most like to play right now is probably Innsmouth. I'm going to echo that. Echoes of the past, Ooh. even. Uh, and say <laughs> and say Carcosa. But 
the one that I want to play most right now is Dark Matter. Uh, I feel like Dream Eaters Part A, uh, like the Dream Side, is still one of my favorites uh, for multiplayer. So I'm gonna go with that, just to not say Kakosa again. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Harrison? <laughs> I w- I was gonna say Carcosa, but <laughs> Forgotten Age really is like just so much of the pulp that I really like. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember, uh, actually, the first campaign I played with Dane was uh, Forgotten Age. We got snowed in, and then um, we somehow, <laughs> like, I, Dane knew all of the choices that I was supposed to make to get turn back time, and I just <laughs> happened to make them. So I nice. just, like, I just yes. accidentally found this <laughs> scenario. So it's, like, has a place in my heart. That's pretty cool. And Return, to, and Return to Forgotten Age just makes it, like, feel like a huge quest. It feels, like, really video gamey, and, like, it's, mm. it really calls to me. I really like that. Definitely um so let's go uh favorite scenario i think it's either pallid mask or uh, wages of sin i'm gonna go i'm gonna go wages of sin just because it's so interesting and fun and hard i it, it, mm-hmm. always go back to that one yeah J- just to confirm i'm not crazy that's the one with the heretics right okay, yes yeah. yep. definitely yeah i'm gonna go with wages of sin but there's so many good scenarios it's really hard to pick one it's a really hard question. I didn't think about it this either. It's, it, it's it's even harder than the campaign, I think. <laughs> I I would I yeah, mine was between Pallid Mask and something else too, but I think I'm actually going to go with a secret name. Mm. I really really like <laughs> the more that I think about the secret name, wow. the more that I love it. But that's the one yeah. with the rats. Rats. The secret name is neat. I, I feel like it's not near my top. Uh, I'm trying to pick recent scenario uh, into deep. That's the 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 clue one, right? Where you have to <laughs> Forgot. Oh yeah, the one that Jeremy yeah that in. that one I think has some of my favorite recent memories, which was like when Dane uh, successfully like guessed at like a twenty five percent chance the correct combo. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. no, no, that was um, that was uh, the vanishing of Alina. Oh, Harper. sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that's, yeah, a good that's one. also that's a good one. Second yeah, scenario. Totally. That was yeah. that was dude. Where's my Alina Harper? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> vanishing. That one's really good. Uh, I liked most of the Windmores, but uh, yeah, so many good stuff. Good stuff. What about you, Harrison? um midnight masks i always Mm, go back to it like i just remember playing arc like the gathering and then we were in a house and then we played midnight mask and then the scale just blew up and i just remember being (laughs) just like in real life so like excited about that like that this is where the game would go and we actually pulled out our uh arkham horror second edition box and just put the cards on the map of the box (laughs) when we first played that rules my favorite scenarios in general are the are the get as many as you can go and go. So, oh yeah, that's I mean that's kind of like a huge MUR thing, right? Like we all love the push your luck. Ones. I'm very surprised, and I would say proud that Dane didn't pick the Gathering for his favorite. So. <laughs> I I was pretty surprised, honestly. <laughs> that's really good character development for. for <laughs> yeah, you 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 really grown a lot, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's more to life than just the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a really good tutorial. Anyway, uh. Let's go with the investigators now. Who are your favorite investigators? Well, my favorite investigator <laughs> was recently very brutally attacked and nerfed <laughs> into, the, into the ground. Really excessively nerfed, I would say. So I'm, I'm not going to pick Mandy, even though for a long time it was Mandy. Um, I think I'm going to go with Amanda. Uh, mm-hmm. She's maybe not... <laughs> so I'm going to go with well, Mandy. She, I, I think she's not as strong as Daisy and, and may, maybe not as unique and strong as Mark, but uh, she's incredibly fun to play and she just feels very unique. Uh, this is a battle between Preston and Tony for sure. I'm not sure who wins. I'm going to say right now, Preston, because he's so unique and he he is truly the money king of this game, I feel, other than Parallel Skids, I feel, but yeah. Uh, I mean, Zoe obviously has a big place in our heart uh, for, for role-playing and theme. Uh, I love Zoe. Uh, I think uh, I, might, I might go with the MJ cop-out of uh, the most recently thing I've played, which is Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's been very fun, um, and that was... I've been playing it without the new cards mostly, so I'm excited mm. to try them out with the new cards too. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Daryl. I'm I'm on team uh, cult cult of the Daryl. You know, so. <laughs> I'm nice. I'm playing that deck with you, and I just love seeing you like move around the mini game. Like the the little oh, yeah. like, am I, are you gonna take a picture of this mini game? Is just so fun <laughs> and thematic. So, I, good choice, but <laughs> I mean, it's like um, what's the what's the rogue card I'm not allowed to play that gets you one extra experience. <laughs> let god sort it out let god sort them out yes it's, you know, it's an extra them. little mini task i have to do constantly and i uh, try to convince yep. harrison like hey i know you want to like go kill something or be productive but what if like <laughs> you let me drag this to be over here first and then evade it and then <laughs> to get one clue and take a picture of it you know it's, it's totally not annoying yeah. i promise <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. harrison what's your what's your pick for favorite investigator Oh, for sure leo anderson like just every time that there's like new allies i'm like can leo take it 
I just love that he <laughs> has just like I love his stat line. Aren't, aren't like, you worried a little bit that there's a new you know Charlie Kane is kind of like on his spot a little bit, kind of stealing oh, a little bit of that Leo Anderson thunder? Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially since I ha- I'm currently playing Charlie as a as a like a guardian type thing, but yeah. <laughs> um, but Leo <laughs> Anderson just has like uh, just something about it. Like you know, I have my uh, my rogue tattoo. Just like I love anything that's that splashes rogue anyway. So like Wendy gets my kind of second shout out, but yeah, definitely Leo Anderson just has just like the thematic pick for me. I just love like having a big group of friends. Um, Okay. Let's uh, turn the spotlight inwards. Do any of you have a favorite MUR episode? Uh, Yeah. Let's, let's be a little bit self-indulgent with this one. <laughs> uh, I was tempted to pick the, like the Arkham Knights recap episodes because I think those are really fun, but I think I'm going to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with the, the first binder trials episode that we did earlier this year, just because (laughs) arguing about cards is really fun. And, uh, sometimes I feel like we, we kind of just get too annoying with it or we go down these rabbit holes that nobody really cares about. That's always the thing that we're kind of trying to avoid. But uh, I think when we do it well, I think it's a really entertaining content for people to listen to. And I think that first binder trials episode was pretty fun. It actually is getting, uh, got a lot of like community feedback. And I know somebody, I know somebody, I'm not going to call them out now, but I think somebody is, uh, is, is like writing up a, rebuttal to one of the <laughs> yeah yeah you know you know why it got a lot of f- feedback because they had takes that's what people respond to that's that's how you get people to care about what you're doing is you, you and you, custom theme music. you throw a you throw a strong opinion out there and you see what happens maybe we should do an episode about like people's people's responses to the binder trials but uh <laughs> sure <laughs> like various rebuttals i'd love that <laughs> i would say it's between when we made the tier list, because that sort of solidified our takes on things. And that like was another good takes episode. Cemented stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that was like, people people obviously love to respond to like, mm-hmm. well, why do you think this is there? Why do you think this is there? Etc. But also the uh, the first Taboo episode that we did, I think it was live. We called it the Seeker Apocalypse because it <laughs> hit a ton of the big Seeker cards. And Ben made this really cool splash for it with like the four horsemen of the apocalypse on it. And I just remember that episode a lot because it was just like kind of mind blowing how how much they wrecked. Yeah, the and, and that was it. Seekers were really bad after that. That was the end of Seekers being open. <laughs> I've never played a Seeker since. <laughs> yeah, they're really bad. And they, and they still continue to nerf them to this day. I see. I was also going to say Binder Trials, but uh, you could say the Binder Trials. <laughs> No, I can't. That'd be copying Dan. Unless, Dan, can you edit the episode so I go first and say Binder Trials? Well, no, how, how about this, Ben? Let, let me retroactively change my pick to the one where we interviewed MJ and Jeff last year, because that one was also oh, really good, yeah. and I was hoping someone was That is what it. I was about to say, is instead of Binder oh, okay. Trials. No, it's, it's it's great. So you and I had, like, the same top two, maybe. Uh, so, like, I don't know. Yeah, just, just say MJ and Jeff, yeah. Yeah, the, the, art, the art episode was very fun. We've had a lot of good ones. I like the Investigators Arkham series that we do every every campaign and the individual ones. So I'll say the art episode. For me, mostly just because it's super self indulgent, but I really loved the uh, the holiday riddle episodes, mm. like oh, where, yeah. where, Those are good. where we just asked players to submit riddles for player cards, and uh, you know we uh, I ran it like a Jeopardy style with the three of you, and. Uh, it was really fun to just like get people to to submit questions and it was all it's really cool to see how like how people were creative with that <laughs> and just obscure knowledge there was one of them was a was like a uh, the Lorac reference <laughs> yeah that was great i was absolutely shocked at how many responses we got and how good they were like mm-hmm. i i was not expecting anything like what we got yeah that was great <laughs> i mean they're all all the episodes are great but you know these are our favorites Speaking of podcasts, how about how about any shout outs for other podcasts or channels that people should should check out? I would uh I would I would shout out um the playing board games YouTube channel. I think does th- they cover other stuff besides uh Arkham Horror the card game, but they do some pretty good videos that are sort of the sort of like card analysis style stuff that that we we talked about earlier and uh I would definitely if if, if you like those aspects of MUR, I would encourage you to check them out. Yeah, they're great. I think for me, it would be uh, the folks who make custom content at MysteriousChanting.com, also located in the Mythos Busters uh, Discord server under custom content. Uh, I'm talking about like Axlotl, The Beard, Tofu Mushroom, Dr. Jack Science, Olivia Juliet, Jack and Zan, all these folks who put like their heart and soul into making stuff for this game that 
don't get paid for it. <laughs> and it's just sort of this monolithic task. It, it kind of gives my keeps my heart happy to know that this game will live on in some capacity after the inevitable <laughs> end. You're so scared of the game ending like any day now. <laughs> as, as long as you don't see a mask, we're still we're still good. We got there. I don't know who's who was convinced the game was going to end earlier, Dane and I, but every time something spooky happens, we're just like, oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, D- Dane has predicted the incoming end of the game like every several times a year, like since it came out. Well, Harrison had a good point is that Daniela is always in the last set of something before that game stops. <laughs> I think MJ inter- in- interacted with that with that meme on Arkham Horror Memes, and I was like, oh no, what does this mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But I mean, we made it past Insmith. Yay! Uh, who was I? Gonna, I I was thinking uh, Optimal Play. They they've done the YouTube channels. They did. They had some fun previews for the spoiler season where they oh the uh, pool just, like, yeah they, they literally they, just they hung did a video out in a pool. Those are right? fun. They did all of their videos in pools. I think unless I wow. missed one. Yep. Where they were just like, oh yeah, we're gonna hang out and uh, talk about this card. And I was like, oh, that's very fun and chill. So they they seem like like cool people. I know. So. I think they've been at Arkham Knights at least at least once. I think I I don't think we yeah. ever actually like got to talk to them, but I kind of saw them around. So maybe maybe we'll get to say hi this mm, year. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say um, just more of like a thematic thing is just I love the HP Lovecraft Literary Podcast. Like they did, they do a lot of different sections on like all of everything HP Lovecraft has ever written. A lot of the Lovecraftian mythos. So like when we went into Carcosa, I listened to a bunch of their. Uh, the King in Yellow um, episodes and things like that. And, um, you know, they, they do a great job. They have a lot of uh, voice actors that read read a lot of the, the things. And they branch out into, like, Edgar Allan Poe and different things like that. So it really helps me, like, getting into uh, some of the campaigns um, to see, like, what the source material was like. So I'd pick them, definitely. Nice. Yeah, obviously we didn't mention anyone involved in a blood feud because we don't want to pick sides there. But <laughs> there's, lots of, there's lots of good... Uh, <laughs> good Arkham content out there you know you just have to go looking for it or you can you know ask us for other recommendations on on our discord pretty active community on facebook and everything and everybody's so fantastic and welcoming and they'll help help you direct you to the places you need to be well so before we do the whole outro shtick a very important piece of news ben and dan are going to be at arkham knight's 2022 hooray Hooray. very very sad that very sad that you guys aren't going to make it that that really sucks but uh we're we're excited to go yeah so if you want to hang out say hi be sure to hunt them down speaking of hunting that might even have some treasures in store for those who do Mm, what could that mean it's not holiday riddle time yet dean yeah this is some kind of it's fine people will figure it out (laughs) i mean it's october we could be a little spooky and ominous right yeah Yeah, there you go (laughs) So, friends, what does your Arkham timeline look like? What's your favorite part of Arkham history? Let us know, reach out to us, leave us a comment, or email us at comments at meur.fm. Follow us on social networks, including Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, or join our Discord server to hang out. You can find links to all of these at social.mur.fm. If you really enjoy what we do, we always appreciate a nice review on your favorite podcast source. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.